Welcome, uh, and welcome to the regularly scheduled public meeting of September 11, 2017 of the Township of Washington Township Council. Adequate notice of this meeting was given in accordance with the Open Publics Meeting Act by the Township Clerk to at least two newspapers in January, and this notice has been posted on the Township Bulletin Board and on the Township website. Once again, if there are any disability requirements, please notify the clerk beforehand. And in case of emergency, exits are on your left and right. Please stand to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We did have our 9-11 uh, memorial service here, and um, it was a very moving, nice ceremony. And if it's okay, I'd like to just take <clears throat> a minute and take a moment of silence for the events that happened years ago. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilman Calamori? Here. Councilman Cassio? Councilman Sears? Here. Councilman Ullman? Here. Council President Bruno? Here. We talked to Cassio, was running a little late, he said. <clears throat> May we have a reading of the total list of bills, please? The following is the list of bills paid since the last bill was submitted representing August 1st, 2017 through August 31st, 2017. 2016 reserve, $29,613.72. 2017 current, $3,690,937.34. 2017 Capital fund, $6,775 even. Animal control, $496 even. Trust fund, $17,591.55. Thank you. <clears throat> Can we just make note, Dr. Cassio is present. Uh, and we have the approval of minutes. We have May 22nd, 2017 public meeting minutes. May 22nd, 2017 conference minute, uh, meeting minutes. July 17th, 2017 closed session one. July 17th, closed session two. August 7th, closed session. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. I just, uh, before we uh, take a, a, a vote, I just have one uh, comment. Uh, in, in the July 17, 2017, which I won't discuss here, but there were some, some action plans to be taken, and I assume that we have moved forward with them. I, I haven't heard. I'm not sure. Uh, we can discuss it later, but there are some, some, some issues in the July 17th meeting. I didn't read them, okay. so I'll have to look at those. Okay. Okay, sir. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. <clears throat> okay, we'll have the report of the mayor, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Bruno. Good evening, everyone. As uh, Councilman Bruno uh, mentioned to you a minute ago, we did have our September 11 ceremony at 5.15 p.m. today. And I was very happy to see about 45 people or so uh, come to it. Uh, and I have to say that the people we had who did the singing and um, Antonio Vinagre who did taps, uh, they did a really outstanding job. You would be very proud of the talent in the township. I also thank the uh, road department. Uh, they did a nice job cleaning up the monument and putting out the wreaths. Uh, our road program 2017 has basically been completed, except that the contractor has to return and address a punch list, of course, of things that have to be uh, redone. B Street Band performance uh, went very well on August 25 with approximately 1,000 people attending. The feedback I got from residents was very positive as they enjoyed the music as well as spending a lot of time with family, friends, and neighbors. Uh, it was the event was sponsored by Ortani Bank, organized by Mike uh, Agnello and Peter Neary of the Fire Department, and of course all the Fire Department members helped out that night. I also thank our CERT team members who were there as the eyes and ears of the Police Department. Department of Mun Municipal Facilities. Uh, our streets were swept the week of August 28. 
uh, by Paramus, except they didn't do the newly paved roads yet. They have to set a little bit longer. Last Wednesday evening, uh, 9 6, there was a power outage basically on the northwest side of town due to a large tree taking out power lines on Weirmas Road. Uh, Daryl Soldi and Jerry Casey were called out at 5 a.m. to clear the road. The department focused on uh, refreshing the yellow no parking uh, lines at the schools, and our new LED stop signs were installed by Ron Shearer and Tim Riley. The staff is continuing to maintain homes that are unabated by property owners. A crew uh, also used our shared service vehicle that cleans out catch basins, and they did roads such as Sussex, South Chestnut, and Calvin. Uh, they also continue to seed Memorial Field uh, weekly with more attention to the high traffic areas. Uh, the staff also checked all the manholes in the critical areas for flow and applied enzymes all were good. Bill Lawler, our road department superintendent, is attending a class called Management Tasks and Responsibilities at the Rutgers Ecology Complex. It's a five-day, seven-hour-a-day class that he needs for certification. Bethany Community Center, um, you all know, of course, obviously, that the Bethany <coughs> Church bought um, the Y, and they have begun their uh, renovations inside, and they're redoing the gymnasium first. Uh, that might be an opportunity for the town in terms of basketball. Recreation. Falcons football has 71 participants and cheerleading has 74. Our Golden Seniors, and that's under recreation, went into the city to see Beautiful, the story of Carol King, and returned to the township uh, with a nice dinner at Lily's Bistro in the shopping center. Habitat for Humanity. As you know, Habitat Bergen is building four two-bedroom affordable units on Jefferson Avenue. Two are earmarked for veterans, and the other two are for seniors 55 and older. A rendering of the building is on our website. Um, go to habitatbergen.org if you want to volunteer for this project. Anybody interested in making an application, they will be available in December. At this time, Habitat is continuing removal work in the VFW in preparation for the new housing. In addition, however, the township was very fortunate to be involved in a community service project with Stryker Corporation through J.C. Ramondo, who is the executive director of Habitat. Ten volunteers from the Stryker Company, which is in Mawa, accompanied by two construction supervisors from Habitat, Gary and Chris, spent the entire day, August 24, on the project in here that included spackling, taping, and painting the council chambers. You can still smell the paint, new paint. And they also cleaned the pavilion area in the basketball court at Memorial Field. The team leader was Crystal Gaffney from Stryker Corporation. Now, they didn't finish um, everything the first day because the taping of this is pretty difficult. And uh, they have a, another group called the Grayheads. And they came here two Wednesdays uh, to complete the peel, uh, painting. It's amazing. Uh, it was a very nice time. Wall of Veterans. Please, if you know of a veteran who lived in the township at some point or still lives here, I would like to have his or her picture. Please send in the uh, senior center. We uh, put the Wall of Veterans back together. Please uh, call Bernadette at Town Hall. Grant provider. Um, Administrator Grove, Councilman Cassio, and Council President Bruno and I interviewed um, a representative from Millennium Strategies to try to look for somebody to write grants. This is not really easy because you have to evaluate the types of grants they write, the cost of writing and submitting them versus the percentage charged by, say, an outside company. For example, if our engineer charges $3,000 to write and submit a Department of Transportation grant for $150,000, that is your cost. If an outside vendor does not get paid to write the grant itself, but gets 10% of the grant, okay, then the cost of that grant to the township is $15,000. Um, however, if the outside vendor also has to ask the engineer for uh, measurements and things like that, because the engineer knows our place, then the, the, we have to pay him, so the cost is really more. So it's very difficult um, trying to interview these people and looking at their records and seeing what is best for the township. Um, the administrator and I um, started putting together this big spreadsheet, uh, which we should have done pretty soon, of all the grants we've gotten um, in the past few years and trying to figure out what they cost us 
uh, so that um, we can look at it. I did make a quick uh, spreadsheet from some of the information. And for Woodfield Road, which we just got a new grant, $165,000 uh, to pave it, uh, the engineer charged $1,950 to write that grant, which is 1.18% of the cost of the grant or the price we're getting. If the grant person would take 10%, that would mean we'd have to pay $16,562. So um, it's really a lot of work to try to figure out how the finances of this. Okay, Town Day, better known as 8th Annual Film Festival, or Fall Festival, I should say. The festival this year will feature a carnival theme with five eight feet by eight feet tents with two games in each tent, ranging from easy to more difficult. It will be a great day for everyone with food vendors, information tables, uh, the Entrepreneur Corner, canine dogs, pony rides, fishbowl game, music rides, popcorn demonstration. If you are interested in being a volunteer or a vendor or an information table, please contact Bernadette at Town Hall. It is October 7 from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and hopefully you can join us. Uh, access improvements for Memorial Field, the Bergen County Open Space Grant that we received for installing a handicap ramp near the field house at Memorial was completed by Wetlands Company on August 25. And the replacement of existing sidewalks and handicap ramps was delayed at that time due to weather. Traffic safety activities. Several more road and safety items uh, are being done since the August 19 initiative on some of our county roads. Uh, I mentioned the LED signs that were put up. Uh, also, we had a police presence at the opening of schools last week um, at all three schools. Um, and also, with the left-hand turn lanes that we made on uh, Washington Avenue, uh, they have indicated that there's been some improvement in traffic movement. Um, if you have noticed any little white arrows on Linwood Avenue, it's because it will be paved by the county very soon. Fundraisers for Frankie. There were two fundraisers held over the weekend for a six-year-old Washington Township boy with epilepsy and seizures. Um, one was at the swim club on Saturday afternoon. I thank them for hosting it. And the other event was at the KFC at their annual picnic. That's the charity they're going to donate to. Area hospitals did well in the rankings. Hackensack University Medical Center is once again ranked number one in New Jersey and number four in the metro area. Valley hospitals ranked fifth in New Jersey and 12th in the New York metropolitan area. So um, we're very fortunate to live in an area with very good medical care. Uh, meeting with school officials on Friday, September 1, Council President Bruno and I met with Superintendent Gonzalez, two board members, and Administrator Rosado to clarify some things and ask about school parking again. Um, Council President Bruno will report on those items. Um, I specifically asked for clarification on the school funding formula um, because there's been a lot in the news lately about different towns who are in regional school districts and how they want to make their uh, share a little more equitable for each town. So there's been a lot in the papers, Pascac uh, Valley, Pascac Hills, Book of Lake, uh, and the River Edge, uh, Riverdale school system. Um, however, there, I did clarify that the number of students is not included in our formula. Okay, we basically pay on the rateables each town has. But since Westwood has 280 more students than the township, okay, it really makes it less equitable for the township. And let's say it was only 250 students, but it is to about 280. And Westwood spends $19,703 per student. That means it's close to $5 million that is unequitable for the township. Okay, shredding and e-recycling. The next shredding and e-recycling event will be on Saturday, October 21, from 9 a.m. to noon. Please get everything ready. Um, there will be two trucks here, one for the shredding, one for the e-recycling, and hopefully you can make it. Um, for the month of July, you recycled about 48 tons of paper as opposed to 89 last year. So I hope to see in September if you could do more, that would be helpful. Fight the flu, I left uh, some flyers down below. Uh, the flu program will be held on Wednesday, September 20, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Senior Center. That's what's right behind you. And um, they will be offering uh, 
two different virus vaccines uh, for people 65 and older. Ambulance Corps. From January 1 to, net, to July 31, the Ambulance Corps was dispatched 303 times and 50 in June. The members of the Corps are always working hard to get new members to provide more service to the residents. Have any of you thought about being a new member? Fire Department. Uh, the Fire Department was dispatched 111 times with 14 in June, not including mutual aid from other towns. And by the way, JQ did get all the birds out of the shingles. Police Department. Um, they have answered in the same time period uh, over 5,000 calls. Uh, last month I mentioned that mental health awareness is a new five-hour state-mandated training for all police departments. Members uh, have already started because they have to complete it by December 1, and they go to the academy in Mawa for a three-hour course, and then they have to watch a video here. Um, obviously, by all the things I have mentioned, our administrator has been very busy with quotes and contracts and um, all kinds of things that go into getting all this stuff done. Uh, Westwood Regional High School football uh, team beat Mawa 41 to 21. Last year we lost the championship to Mawa, so I think they were really ready for this game. They were ranked three this morning in the newspaper, uh, the best teams in the area. I think maybe next week they'll move up to two. MetLife, here we come. Planning board. You may have noticed a new store in the shopping center called Party Plus, which was recently approved by the planning board. Although the main idea in that store is balloon designs by Raquel, the store has many useful party items and they're reasonably priced. Stop in when you get a chance and you will see them at Town Lake because they're doing uh, entrance balloons for that day. On Wednesday, September 6th, the board approved a new store called Miracle Catering which will be doing off-premises catering, but will also be serving like certain meals. Every week will be like a different kind of thing. So we hope they all do well. Library. It's no secret that the library has new and great programs scheduled for fall. Next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, September 16 at 2 p.m., there will be a San Gennaro celebration featuring Frank Sinatra uh, with a concert screening and cafe. The screening is from the New York Philharmonic where, where they celebrated his legacy. But you do have to sign up uh, to call the library, 664-4586. Um, you might remember also in the beginning of the year, uh, Valley Hospital funded a mayor's wellness program. Uh, it was a great program. We had all kinds of giveaways information. Well, the walking part, it's called Healthy Steps. Um, we had a whole group from January to like May. And then for the summer, we just did an informal thing. Uh, but they started again this past Saturday, and we were up, I think we had 15 or 16 people. Emily Kratzer is in charge of us, and I hope that more people want to come and walk on Saturday mornings. It starts at 10 o'clock, takes about an hour or so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Dr. Cassio. Thank you, Mr. Council President, and I'll, I'll keep it brief because we have our planner here tonight. Um, again, uh, I want to remember all the uh, people that perished on 9-11 16 years ago. I'm sure it brings a lot of uh, memories back to everyone here. Um, very, very solemn day. Uh, the mayor, again, covered pretty much everything. Didn't leave me much to say, uh, though I do want to make an announcement. I may be activated and not around for a couple of weeks. I might be going down to uh, Georgia and Florida. I'm part of the Medical Reserve Corps, and we've been activated, so I may not be around. But if there's anything you need, I always have my cell phone available so you guys can call me or any of the public. Um, other than that, I'll keep my comments brief. Thank you. Mr. Sears? Yes, thank you. I echo uh, Dr. Cassio's um, comments about the 9-11, and uh, I hope you do go. You'll be safe. Yeah. Uh, so, I just want to make one other statement. As I've been working on a veterans program called Qatars for Vets. They are veterans that have PTSD, and they go to a 12-week program, and when they complete the program, they get a free Qatar, and they continue with the lessons. While I was down in the county, I was talking to an A.J. Lunar, who is uh, the veterans representative, and he introduced me to a Mrs. Julia Orlando. Um, she is the director of health and services that will decide who is going into the two veterans units that the mayor talked about. Um, we set up a October the 4th meeting at the public library. 
from six to eight for any township veterans that are interested in applying for those two units, she will walk you through it and uh, give us the first opportunity. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Excuse Thank you. Me, Mr. Sears, could you yeah. just repeat those dates? Uh, it's October the 4th, and the hours are from 6 to 8. It will be in the yeah. public library. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Calamari. Thank you. Um, yeah, obviously, today is a day of remembrance, and so we keep everyone in our prayers who uh, we lost that day and afterwards. Um, we also lost a, a very young person in our town, uh, Grace Catherine Scutches, uh, was three years old, was taken from us by cancer uh, that she fought valiantly. They're trying to put together a uh, candlelight vigil for her, so I would ask that you uh, keep an eye out for that and attend it if you can. Um, other than that, everything else has already been covered. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dolman. Uh, I have uh, nothing to report. I'd just like to thank uh, the mayor for organizing the 9-11 memorial. You. Um, you know, it is a, uh, a sad day for many people. Um, and, you know, I would just like to uh, recognize a, a friend of mine who perished that day. Uh, his name was David Suarez. Uh, he was 24 years old. At the time, uh, he was a Deloitte consultant who I had worked with uh, at one of my former jobs. And, uh, you know, you watch TV and you hear about uh, all these individuals who perished that day. Uh, and it really, uh, it, hurt, it touches me and it uh, hits me hard on this day because uh, it was truly brilliance. His brilliance was ex extinguished. and. Uh, I think he would have been a great person. He was a great person, and I think there were great things ahead of him. So, uh, you know, I wanted to put a name with this date, and uh, well, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, and, and of course, I know in town we had a gentleman, Jim Romito, uh, who actually was there in 93 and then went back again in 9-11, and he didn't make it out. And I think, believe his, his daughter is still in town, so. Our thoughts and prayers to them, and, and actually everybody that's still serving for us. Uh, I do have one question, Tom. I, I actually took guitar lessons years ago. I didn't go too far, but I do have a guitar in my basement. So are these donations and new ones? Yes, we'll, we'll take it. Okay. I'm just Thank curious. you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're open to general public discussion. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Casio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Is there anybody like to address the council? We are here to stay in shift. If you'd like to call, come up, you just have to state your name, address. Yeah, and just, you can just talk one at a time, would be great. Speak or, or, or uh, try and sit close to the microphones so we can hear you too. Hi, Marissa Lavazola, 597 Lincoln Avenue. Laura Soldanalo, 595 Willow Street. Allison Collagea, 447 Chestnut Street. Zilla Roberto, 340 Hoover Avenue. Mary Ann Hageman, 174 Walnut. Mary Roth, 119 Woodfield. We're here to express our concern regarding the recent ordinance that was passed by the council, 1708, regarding the commuter parking lot and the changes to the regulations in how to get permits. We'd like to ask the council um, questions about how you determine the source of the parking problem, how many individuals and permit holders complained, what was the frequency of the complaints, uh, what time were they arriving to get spots, what efforts were made to consult with all of the permit holders today to ask us if we had any issues with the current arrangement at the parking lot, any assessments that were done prior to the passing of the ordinance, any other alternatives that were considered before passing the alternatives, I think our main concern here is that if there were some complaints, the council has passed an ordinance that results in several people being disrupted every day versus a select few commuters being disrupted occasionally with several alternatives. Personally, we find this very stressful. Been commuting from this lot for over nine years, never had an issue getting a spot, and now I have to be concerned about finding alternatives every day if I'm not lucky enough to get a lottery spot. 
you want to hear from each of us? This is she's speaking really for the group. That's fine. Point. Yeah. yeah, no, that's fine. I think it's best if you if you'll voice your opinion and, and speak. But wait, I sent a letter to the council on, on Thursday, so it really expresses my concern. That this is this is passed, really putting 35 current permit holders. I'm sorry, 35 permit holders. Yeah, I'm sorry. You just have to identify yourself again yeah. for us. As a group, I'm sorry. It's tough. If you could do it each time you speak, then I can keep a note. Okay. If you don't want, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My name again is Laura Searle Danalo at 595 Willow Street. Hi. Thank you. Sure, so hi again, Allison Collishaw, uh, 447 Chestnut Street. Um, just wanna echo the sentiments here. I think the biggest um, concern in addition is that this is a great town and young people wanna move here and if we don't have commuter parking for people, um, I think we're gonna lose people uh, coming to the town who want to <coughs> experience the community that we've built but also wanna benefit from the parking. Um, you know, in addition to that, I'd imagine the town is equally invested in, um, you know, not only making our commuters happy, but this seems like a revenue opportunity for the town, considering there's a lot of folks who are willing to pay a pretty penny for the parking space. So, would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, not only what went into this decision, but alternate opportunities for us in the future to attract more young families into the great town that you guys have built. Uh, Mary Roth, 119 Woodfield Road, and I guess I probably am the longest commuter here. I've been commuting from this town for 26 years, paying taxes for 26 years, um, taking advantage of the parking lot for 26 years. Um, we make our livelihood in New York City, um, and we need access to the bus service that is leaving from this town. Um, th there is no train service from this town, so we would have to find alternate um, uh, parking or uh, places in the other towns that we would have to commute from, but not, but that is not convenient for many of us. Um, and we look to this town as providing us with services for the taxes that we're, receive, we're paying to you all. And we would like the courtesy of knowing that you're going to be voting and changing on some, changing something that we are invested in, that we have been using for 26, 9, 13, um, and this isn't everyone who commutes in that lot. Um, and I personally have been parking here for 26 years and maybe there was once that I did not get a spot. Um, and I think that you're, you're um, making it this very inconvenient for all of us. Now we will have to find other parking to go to the bus and what does that leave us? Parking on the streets and we all know the concerns that have been expressed regarding the parking around the school. Um, and we don't want this to turn into another one of those challenges for people who live in this town. And by limiting the number of spots to 35 lucky individuals is really penalizing the other 35 plus individuals that currently hold um, uh, permits. Um, and as was said, you know, if you need more money from us to make alternate opportunities for us to park, you know, that's one thing that we would be willing to discuss because we, we, we've been you've been very we've been very fortunate to receive a very um, economical pricing for the parking in this town. Um, and we want to, I mean, I've invested 26 years here. My children have grown up here. We have people with new children. They want to stay here. They don't want to have to move. And we, we want the courtesy of having this opportunity and to have a discussion about it before it is now, the ordinance has changed. So now that we, 35 of us will not, and I'm just throwing out numbers that I've heard and we look forward to hearing what you're going to describe to us as to how this transpired and who is being inconvenienced. And what we all recognize is that there are times of the year when it's very light parking in the lot. There are people who work remotely. That's a new, you know, that's, people are moving to that. Um, so not every spot is taken every day. People are on vacations, people travel. And by limiting it, cutting it in half or more, is just not a solution for us. Um, and we would really like to hear um, what can be done about this to make it a win-win for both, all of us. Um, and especially for commuters and young commuters, and I know I won't be doing this for you know, another 10 years, but these people will be. <laughs> and you know, you're putting us all in a very awkward, stressful um, situation because no one wants to look for a new home and no one wants, I mean, who here is gonna get up at six o'clock in the morning and drive us to the bus when we don't have a parking spot? 
are you volunteering? I mean, <laughs> my, you know, we don't all have the luxury of having someone uh, take us to the bus and pick us up from the bus, especially in inclement weather in, this, in the winter time. Um, and, you know, by limiting it, we don't see that as a solution um, to this problem by penalizing half of us. Can we get the history as to how you came to this determination that was the best option for the town? I can't hear you. Is this not on? You have to be real close to it. Sorry, I'm watching it. Really, this is not as close as they are. <laughs> <laughs> what were the other options, and how was this come? How did we, the council, come to the termination? This was the best option for the town. Would anybody like to feel that before? I'll, I'll, I'll take some of those questions. Okay. <clears throat> uh, on a weekly basis, we were getting multiple complaints. I ca I cannot park my car there. Um, there were people pulling in there that didn't even have a registration to park in there. There were people pulling in there that would change the number of the year on their hanging sticket. You know, it got to a point where we had to have a police officer go there on a daily basis, off the streets, and go to car to car to car. Tickets were written. Some of the cars weren't even parked in a proper space. They were actually parked half on the sidewalk. So it got to a point where the complaints were just coming in endlessly. And the decision had to be made. We had to stop it. And also the way the, the parking was configured, people have to back out onto Pascac Road. And that is a dangerous situation. So are you planning on relining the, the lot? Is that the resolution? The no, lot the, will be relined? Relining the lot, it, it, it wasn't even a solution. There'll be the permanent 35 spots. And there won't be the constant people pulling in and backing out into Pascac Road. Okay, so that was so you have to, so I, and so that's. You still have to back out. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just you gotta go one at a time for us. I know so if you want to come up and, and sit and speak, that's fine. But so you're saying the issue was that the the placards people weren't people parking illegally, that, that making their own the spots. How many issues. people specifically, individual permit holders, and the permit number were? actually complaining and how often were those complaints and were who's it was almost every other day that we every got other a day you personally were receiving a, you yes. personally were receiving a complaint yes police department yes and the, the police, police department. department council was getting letters yeah. and it came to a point where uh, the situation was really getting out of control with all due respect the issues that you explained will not be solved with the current proposal you explain that people are putting in false tags, they're parking there illegally. That could still happen under the new well, system. Well, if you have a, per I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you have a permanent 35 spots, you are assigned one, one ticket, so you know that that's your spot. But that doesn't preclude people from your explanation who were parking there without registrations and illegal tags. No, I think, I think you have to come to the, you have to come up and get your permit and you have to have your registration and your license and show that you're a Washington Township resident. You know, we had people park there also that were not township residents. They were from other towns that were parking there. You know, basically, we, I, I don't have, I don't know which one of you has, but you had a lot of statistics there, so if you leave the paper with me, I can look into it, because I don't have the answers for all the statistics. But, you know, we, we sold over 65 permits in 17, so we oversold a lot. And yes, we were getting complaints. Uh, I mean, currently, right now, there, there is not many people that have come forward to put their name in, and, and it's possible we might not even get 35 applications. Uh, we just expecting, yeah. what? We just got the letter. We just got. I'm the just letter. telling you what, what it is right and now. It's not due till September again, 25th. So, with all due respect, I think you're missing the fact of the simple math. The fact that, as Mary indicated, several of us do not go in every day because we do travel. We do occasionally work from home. We might be on vacation. By having only 35 permit holders for 35 spots, you guarantee that you are going to underutilize that lot almost every day. So instead of disrupting a select few people who on occasion may not get a spot and need to find an alternative, the rest of us are forced to find an alternative every single day. And I don't think the math is fair to what you are doing to us. The other thing I would add, too, is I think as community members, we don't want other folks from other towns parking in our lot. So clearly that's an issue. Like, if we need to solve for that, that Excuse makes your address at least. I'm sorry. 447 Chestnut Street. Um, I think we'd all agree we don't want folks from other towns parking in the lot. 
The concern is that the people who actually show up and park may very well be displaced. And I guess I would ask, does anyone have a point of view on, if we're giving away 65 spots and we're only going to honor potentially 35, what is the town considering to do to accommodate more people who actually live in town to allow them to park and take the bus every day? Has there been any plans? So there's been discussion. There is property uh, next to the firehouse that the town owns. Uh, by the monument, there's a red house. That's our property. Uh, you know, right now I believe it's being rented. Not that we're doing it for any rental income purpose, uh, but there is property there, and we have discussed uh, options in terms of that space and that property. Uh, again, we would need somebody to look at how we would do it in terms of there's a monument there. We'd have to move certain things we'd have to take the building down obviously but there there is a space there uh, we also have to look at the firehouse in terms of if we house a new truck because again that's safety for the residents sure. also so yes we have looked at options and the property and there is property there but that doesn't solve the problem for the 35 <coughs> unlucky individuals that will not have parking come January 1st yeah, I, and where I, are we I supposed to park? Are you going to give us designated streets near the bus stops that we can park our cars? But, um, but what about the other 35 people that can't get in the lot now? Well, I you mean, didn't mention the other 35 people. Mm -hmm. So there are people on a... You mentioned that you gave 65 spots out. Right. So there are 35 in well, addition to the 65? Well, 35 spots, but they sold 60 tickets or 60 parking permits. And those people can't get in the lot either. In any given day, last Thursday, there were six spots available at 9 a.m. On Friday, there were seven spots available at 9 a.m. So I don't see where this problem of not being able to park is. So you're inconveniencing 35 people for what reason? You're, you mentioned that there was an issue with cha people changing the numbers. So the new placards we have, you can't change the numbers. So that solves that problem. And then the illegal parkers, I was there on, I did an inventory on Friday, and there was an, someone without a placard there. So why are we being penalized? Because someone's not following the rules. You know, if, so if, I have, if I was the lucky one that had an assigned spot and someone's in my spot, what am I to do when I see someone parked in my spot illegally? You call the police. And then I miss my bus. Hmm. And I'm not, I'm not at work on time. It just doesn't seem like a reasonable resolution. But I think the, answer, the question we would like answered is where are we going to park on January 1st if we don't get a permit? Have you thought the Have you thought about the repercussions of your actions? Um, you know, to when I commuted for a number of years into the city, I drove down to the park and ride on. So you're Fashion telling Center. us to leave the town, the town that we pay taxes right. to. You're asking us to pay tolls, extra gas, extra commuting costs. While we guarantee spots will be empty in that lot because commuters do not go in every single day. And also the one in the fashion center, mm -hmm. first first. All those parking lots right on the Garden State Parkway there, you, you, you go in and you get a spot. If you don't can, you state your you can you state your name and address, please? I'm sorry. It's just so relief. Hageman, 174 Walnut. If you do not get there early, you do not get a spot. It's the same thing. First come, first serve. You know, one of the somebody mentioned that you know we made this decision without talking about it but this was discussed uh, it wasn't it wasn't that we sat here and said let's have an ordinance and this is what we're going to do this was brought up in many meetings uh, it might have even been in the papers i'm not sure so so it's not it's not it's not like we're sitting here saying and i understand what you're saying but i i want you to understand it's not not a decision that we sat here drew up an ordinance and said this is it thanks very much i mean we've had these discussions and, and now that the ordinance is out and you're coming in, I understand that, you know, uh, again, we have property there we have to look at. Uh, but at the same time, I think as Mr. Sears says, when you oversell something, it's not the right answer either. So, so when you show up, I mean, so there are six spots available, I get that. But then when, the, when there aren't six spots available and they're calling police and everybody else is parking there, so how do you control that? I mean, there's, there's no solution to control it unless you give, huh? Can you provide a log of how many complaints you've received? Well, that's why I said if you leave the list of questions, I mean, I don't have a log. I'd have I mean, to these are the same exact questions yeah. I emailed you on Thursday. Okay. So they're, okay. So then they're I, I can, okay. So then I can talk to the police okay. and see. 
I know for a fact that other towns oversell. Fairlawn, when I first moved here, I was looking for several options when I first moved here. They oversell and they tell you when you buy your permit, it is first come, first serve. So you know what you're getting. And I feel if the township would sell the permits and tell people it's first come, first serve, that people would respect that. Because I don't mind going to the park and ride when the lot is full. It is rare. I can count on one hand in the time, the number of times in nine years I've had to do that. I have left as early as 6.50 in the morning. I've left as late as 9 o'clock. And I almost always get a spot because of the reasons we explained earlier. It would be extremely frustrating to get in my car every day and drive by that lot and see it being underutilized simply because we didn't want to deal with a few people complaining. Because everyone that I've spoken to that has taken this bus agrees with us, except for one person that acknowledged that they complained because they got a ticket for making their own spot, when in my opinion they should have just gone to an alternative that day. Okay. There are so 16 I, I, buses that leave that on, are on the short line, on, and on 12 the of the 16 are before 8.30, and I've never not have gotten a spot in my five years okay. of commuting before so I, 8.30. I will, I will pass your, your letter on to the uh, captain uh, of uh, traffic to look at the complaints and see if we can get you some information. It's, what we're just asking for is that we were consulted in some way. Our contact information is with the clerk. They're same same reason that when they had the repaving, we should have been notified and at least brought in for, sent out a questionnaire to poll what the general <coughs> consensus is of the of commuters. Okay. Mr. Bruno. Yes. I will ask the captain to give me a report. Yep of any calls that they received, how many tickets they've given, okay. and how many empty spots are there on a daily basis. Okay. 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 I just want to further echo, like I think these guys are making a point, like there's a short term issue with the 35 spots, but overselling is not great either. So what is the town going to do? And it sounds like a great alternative, but to attract people who want to commute into the city, because I generally think that I've heard of a lot of newcomers to the town who've told me, I've tried to get a spot uh, ticket, I can't. I'm on a waiting list. So I'm concerned that I get my lottery ticket on January, and now I just can't even pull in and park anymore because there's too many people coming. So I think that that's something we should think about to future, to think about the future of the town, to make sure that we have commuting moving forward. Agree. I'm not disagreeing with you. Again, there's, there's, there's property, there's, there's uh, availability that, that we have to look at. Uh, we have to get a plan together. For extra spot, it, it doesn't matter whether we we didn't sell it, oversell or not. We still have extra amount of spots there. Period. Yeah, so you sure. attract new people, and we yeah, have no way to put them anyway. Yeah. But so why, that we have to find out. But why don't you use the same system we've used for thirty? I don't know how many years before I moved here. Why all of a sudden a drastic change to the process because a few people are inconvenienced? Mm -hmm. Why are we? Well, why are you changing it? I again, mean, it, again, we, when you when you oversell something, 65 tickets. It's not. We, we don't want this to be a revenue maker for the town. Although it's great, you know, we're making a hundred dollars. Back to the suggestion that was made: right. first come, first serve. Okay, we we will look into it, and we will certainly get back to you. Can I just Thank say you. one last thing? I don't know what the alternative would be, but I, I mean, I would love to hear if nothing changes with this process. Like, what else can we do? Because parking down at Vince Lombardi. Is not going to cut it, and I don't mean to sound. Well, I mean, Westwood has mom, parking. I'll Hills consider leaving parking. the town. I commuted to the city for years, also. I, I didn't get spots. But why are you I used chasing to out of our own town? I, yeah. I, I, I'm not chasing anybody out of town. You're asking the question. I used to drive to Hillsdale because I couldn't get spots here. I drive to Westwood because I couldn't get spots here, and I drive to Hocus Car. I couldn't get spots here. I wasn't chasing anybody out of town. I chased myself out of town because I couldn't park anywhere. So I had to commute to Westwood. I had to commute to Hillsdale, and I had to commute to Hocus. So hopefully you're empathetic I mean, with what we're going through here. I'm sorry? I hopefully that shows you're empathetic. I mean, I, and I, I, I am. Sound, I mean, I, listen, I know what it is to get in the car and I have to leave, And that's not good I for agree. the town. Okay, so, so we, we will pass it on. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more thing to say. You know, you talked about the 35 spots, Marianne Hegman, 174 Walnut. You realize the 35 spots are still backing out onto Washington and parallel parking around the side that if people are in those slots already going in, you won't be able to parallel park your car up there. My car got hit, somebody trying to parallel park there. Did like $800 worth of damage, okay? Because they couldn't get out of the spots on top. So that's an issue, because if you're signing spots to people now, and I come in and I have an SUV, how am I going to parallel park on those top spots with everybody in there? So that's something to consider. Thank you. 
there anybody else? Sir? Hey, everyone. How are you? My name is Robert Kopp. I'm at 515 Washington Avenue. Marjorie Kopp, 515 Washington Avenue. I wanted to uh, address the council today in reference to the property that's. Uh, Just pull yes. Pull can you hear me? Microphone. Pull it closer to you. You can. It'll move. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I wanted to address the council um, to the property that's next to me, 501 Washington Avenue, and the. Uh, it's an abandoned property. The house is foreclosed on. Um, the place is a atrocious at the pigsty. What address are you at? I'm sorry. I'm at what's 515 Washington Avenue. And what's the address of the property? 501 Washington. We've been complaining for years about this house. First, there were people living in it. I, I can't hear you. Just, just there were on. people living in this house for eight, seven years. I don't know how long. Yeah, we, we've, we've complained to the... Board of Health, who told us they couldn't do anything about it. Right now, the property has garbage. It has an abandoned car. Actually, it has plates on it, which I think is illegal if it's abandoned and has plates on it. Um, there is mattresses. There is washing machines. There is uh, dryerettes out there, construction materials. The weeds are overgrown, and we need help from the council. We went to the town. We went to the uh, county. They said they don't handle anything in Washington Township. So we need the we help. Need help. It's getting out of control. Can I, can First I just, we get, can we I get just ask, just so I understand your location. So on Washington, where are you on Washington? Where's 515? Um, it's right across from Fern, Fern Street. Fern Street. Oh, okay. Okay. Between Beach and, Between okay. Beach and Fern. And Fern. So it's right. Colonial Beach, Fern in that area? Correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. Um, I've contacted the Board of Health. Yeah, the Board of Health said he couldn't get on the property to take pictures. I believe that's was he said he could he, he wasn't allowed on the property right right and then that's he, where the washing machines and yes, everything yeah. is in the exactly back. right then now he went to the neighbor next door said he looked at the property with binoculars and he told me that he saw absolutely no sign of any infestation and if there's no sign he can't do anything yeah. uh, well we, we have signs because now we're being infested with mice we're being infested with mice we have uh, we have groundhogs on our property we can see where their their gutters are falling down their soffits are actually exposed where we see um, squirrels and other animals going in so we know there's um, there is um, the squirrels living in the house um, they do come and cut the grass once in a while but they do not cut any of the uh, vines, they do not cut or clean up any of the stuff. There was uh, gas cans there that were full of water. Instead of taking them out and throwing them out, they cut holes in them so they don't well, retain water. We don't know if there was water. We don't know what was in there. Well, they have, just have, cut. have we sent the code officer there? Uh, is that this is the first time I'm hearing about yeah. so. this. Is, I'm no, just I trying to search. Harry this went there. He, he couldn't get on the property. Here's the only person that. What, what board, who did you call from the Board of Health? They spoke to our office. You can look at the, all the yeah. complaints they called that we your have signed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only one that helped us this last time was Cornelia. She actually got someone onto the property to come and exterminate because there were so many mosquitoes. I told her the summer's here, it's hot. I've got kids, I don't let them out in the yard. I'm paying taxes. I, I have pictures, and this is what <coughs> we see out our dining room window. And just the fact there's an abandoned car that's sitting there, God forbid if a child gets in there, I mean, you can't say anything, it's so, so overgrown. We just need, we need someone to help us, all right? Not only that, I mean, I know when there was an issue at the corner of Washington and Pascac with that property, there was complaints and the, the, everything was done to get that property resolved. What it, um, my question is, is it because it's out of sight, out of mind? Or, you know, is something done because it's in view. I mean, I, I look at it at my I backyard think, and I mean, out my window. Personally, I think it's if it's if we are made aware of it as a council, I think we actively try to address it. There's a situation on Wayne Place that was brought to our attention or brought to my attention by a resident. I referred it to the administrator who referred out uh, the uh, code officer. 
They yeah. had the mosquito, uh, Bergen County mosquito in. They've uh, cut the pro cut the grass. Uh, you know, we've put a lien against the house. So I think it's a matter of uh, awareness. And I'm not saying you haven't contacted the town, the county, all of the groups that you uh, explained. But I, I personally will tell you this is the first I'm hearing of this for this property. Um, but you know, if these first few pictures are any indication, you know, clearly there's an issue. And, uh, you know, I would think that this is something that the town should be able to assist with. Uh, you know, your situation is not unlike the situation on Wayne, mm -hmm. and it's probably not unlike other situations. And perhaps uh, we as a council with the administration need to come up with some stronger ordinances or a lower threshold uh, for the town to get involved and assist. Um, you know, I think people's property rights have to be respected, and I'm sure the uh, attorney, Mr. Paula, will keep us in line. But, you know, this is, you shouldn't have to look at this. I, I agree. This, this is this, one of the reasons why I wanted to come to the town council, to make sure that you are aware of it. You know, yeah. as, as a resident here, I would like to even see if, if there are complaints like this. I mean, I've been living here since 1999. My kids go to school here. We bought an old house. We... Fixed we fixed the old house. We sure. did an addition. We were, we're beautifying the town. We love this town, but to live to get something like this, no, it, this it's 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 not only that. Plus, I'm getting um, uh, mice in my house. Sure, which I'm not happy with right now. Which had never um, happened before. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I agree with you, Mike. I, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. But if you called the county, they're not, they're not going to come here. No, they and told you me call, they wouldn't. Yeah. If you call the board of health. That's one issue, but overall, it's our, our zoning code officer, Gary Masek, who will go out there, like they did on Wayne Place, and I mentioned my report about the, un, you know, they continue to, our road department does continue to work at these unabated houses, and we put liens against them, and we have a couple right, right now. Right, but okay. putting liens on them, the house is in foreclosure, what, no, no, what no. But you, so we it's do. nothing for us right now. No, 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 but. From our point of view, we can authorize them to go and clean here. And That's so, not what I was told. Okay. That's but, not what I've been told well, over you know, and over no, no, again. I, I just need to interject. I found an email that Gary Masnick has been aware of this for a long time, and I think he worked with, he got in touch with Mr. Pollard because there were issues with the bank who owns the property not maintaining it. But we were complaining even before. No, I that. just don't know if the attorney has an update okay. because okay. I don't know what happened after that. So we so, obviously so have something to do here. Yeah, so before, before we um, identify the internal, potential internal lack of communication or breakdown in communication, you have come before us. There's an awareness now. And, you know, we will refer it to the code officer and we will ensure that something gets done. And if nothing it can be done, we will explain why that can't happen. I, I can't imagine that that, that, that this has been out there for that over this six has months. to that this has to you know you have to look at this. Right. But um, you know we we can't legislate taste. Uh, we should be able to legislate maintenance of a property. Right. Uh, so you know, uh, Madam Mayor and. Marianne, if this is something we can have Gary look at again, I'm going to send him an email right now. Write a fresh report, and if there's an issue, and the board of health with the lien, uh, Mr. Perhaps Mr. Pollock could get involved. Now, when I contacted the county board of health, they told me that the town does not contract with them because she said that if you did, they would go in and they would be able to take care of all the debris that was there. Because that so, doesn't even show the debris that's on the other side of the property. Yeah, so so we, let so it, we let have it, a private. We contact with the Northwest Bergen Health Authority. And and what are they supposed to do? Come well, on. when they well goes through Cornelia, and right. um, they they come out, they come out and do what they have to do, which would be to throw out the garbage. Whatever it is, yeah. Cornelia has told me that they cannot. Okay, so clearly. We are not communicating accurately or completely to you. And we, you've made us aware of it. We've asked 
the mayor and the administrator along with the attorney uh, if his involvement is needed uh, to figure out a path to resolution. So it's not going to look like a golf course, but I think what they found on Wayne is that to the extent that we could do things, they've cut the lawn, they had a abandoned pool, they've treated the abandoned pool, they've knocked down the science experiment that's growing in the pool. And, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's not beautiful, but I think it addresses some of the health issues that were raised and addresses some of the aesthetics. Okay, and, and time frame that would be oh, about? And also, who, who do we contact? Or is there someone that will call us or is there a person that we oh, can contact so we know that it's being followed up on? So the, the, no, the, the code it officer huh? administrator, I know, Gary Masnick, is, is, he reports to to uh, Mary Ann, Madam Mayor, Mary Ann. So Mary Ann will be your contact if that's good, because she'll be in touch with Gary, okay. and he'll be, he'll be we'll, we'll reconvene with it and get you an answer. We'll get you some answer by the end of this week, at least that someone's got out there. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I'm usually pretty good around town, and I always report things, but I haven't seen this, so I will drive well, by. Because it's, it's not out front. It's, everything is in the back. It's right. Okay. And, it, it, right. and if you go up Washington Avenue, of course it's up on a hill. No, you can't see anything up there. So everything is in the back, everything on the, in the north front, side so. or the south side? It is on south? the it'd be south on the south side, side. Yeah. South, south side. South. Okay, we will we will get back to you. So if you okay. come if you actually come down fern to the dead end mm -hmm. from the opposite way, you can see everything. Okay. So all right. Um, thank you I very much. Because so, it really is okay. yeah, it's <clears throat> unbearable. It really is. No, I, they went that way. May we retain the pictures? Yes. Can Marianne have those pictures? We can even email you more if you need to. I think it's you no. Know, we got the hit. We got it. Thank you. Yes. Bob, just a quick comment. Yeah. Um, you and everyone else who might be watching on TV, if you have an issue like that, please contact us a lot sooner. Uh, the council, uh, because we can get things moving. I think very quickly for you. Um, you know, that's why we're here. Um, we all ask to be here. And so it's our job to address those things. Thanks. Anybody? Oh, come on. Hold on. Hold on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Mary I brought you what I consider a problem two meetings ago. I wasn't here for the last one. I'm talking about the lack of signs that say <clears throat> you must stop for pedestrians in the crosswalk. Twice a week, maybe three times, I go to Bergenfield to a senior citizen center. And those signs are all over the place as I travel over, over there. <coughs> we still don't have anything here. We are the one town that doesn't give a damn. And I'd like to see that change. I, I wish I can tell you I had the power to put the sign up myself, but I don't. I mean, I know I, I'm going to look at Madam Mayor. She's going to say she's going to talk to Captain Hackbarth. Uh, again, I, you know, we have limited power and authority here. I don't think any of us, I'm not speaking for anybody here, but I don't, uh, my, my feeling is that we're not against having these signs. We want them. But there's just some resistance as to they feel it's a hazard versus a safety. So, uh, well, Madam Mayor, could ask Captain Hackbarth again, and I, and, I think and, he has you know. he has uh, some plan. I haven't heard the whole thing yet, but he's working on something. Okay. More sign. By the way, after listening to those ladies of where they don't commute to New York anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> me too. <laughs> but I think they were also a little self-centered. As soon as they made their peace, they left. It would be nice if they would listen to what other people had to say also. I don't have the authority for that either. <laughs> but thank you. Is there anybody else?
Michael DeSetta, 347 Beach Street. Thank you. Um, my first question is, is the recently completed milling and paving, was the striping part of the original contract? Yes, and that's one of the items they have to come back have to, to come do. Back and do so we're, we're considering contractual work that school started a week and a half ago that there's no crosswalks along Ridgewood right outside here in front of the shopping center. There's no crosswalks that got milled out. So that's contractual work that's still not completed, but we're considering that punch list work? No, that wasn't. Well, the mayor said that, but in on the website, it's described as they have to come back to stripe and do punch list. But how they, long is it going to take they them? Did, they did the crosswalks on Ridgewood Road. No, they have not. Well, yes, the county, I've, I've actually seen them. No, the, the crosswalks at Colonial are still missing. The crosswalks right Oh, you're talking about, I'm talking about the ones that are going across Ridgewood. I'll contract, I'll contact the... Uh, no, I'm talking, we're not talking about the county. We're talking about Township of Washington work, which yeah. included, pave, uh, which included striping. And the kids have been in school now for nine days almost, and we still haven't completed the crosswalks. We were, t I was told two meetings ago, Mrs. Mayor, that the DMF was going to go out and refresh all the crosswalks. That still has not been done. They did quite a few the other day. None, none, on, none, none, none of the streets approaching the high school, which is, I believe, the most commuters that we have, student population that's walking are the high school students. If they did them around the elementary school where everybody gets dropped off, that's great because they still need it to be done. But there's no crosswalks on Washington, Ridgewood Road, or any of the main thoroughfares that were refreshed. And you had made a statement two meetings ago that they would be refreshed. So can you... Can you Washington and Ridgewood? You know, well, can, you, can you email the locations so that, you know, all, I, know, I know you're talking Mr. about... Mr. Council President, all of them, because none of them have been done. <laughs> no, I think, Bob, I think what he's referring to is any of the newly paved roads where they meet Ridgewood, the crosswalks from the east side to the west side of the street are not paved. I, I, I don't know for a fact, are, but I'm taking... correct. Mr. So I, that's easy enough to identify, and I mm -hmm. know the one at Manhattan has not been refreshed. The one at Manhattan has not been refreshed. Yes. Neither has the double yellow line. They could have put in temporary, you know, usually when we pave like this, we, you know, when you have a double yellow line coming down a hill to an intersection, to a traffic light, you, they're, they're, I believe they're like 50 cents each. The little plastic yellow reflective markers that we put down as a temporary pavement measure, I mean, it's typical contractual stuff that we should have done. You know, it's been, it's, the pavement got done almost three weeks ago, and Manhattan still doesn't have a double yellow line. I mean, it is a busy street. Come on. Um, I just yeah. that. Um, thank you, Mrs. Mayor, for having the ceiling painted, but it's already peeling. It's no, kind of I don't embarrassing. know what happened with this. I know, but it's just you made a statement it, that we had it done, and it, no, it, it's. Did, it, let me it, tell you something. I cannot believe how hard they they had this. Uh, I understand table. that, but but look. I, I but don't know what happened to this a one. A picture is a thousand. You know, I speaks know. a thousand no, words. They didn't scrape this apparently. Okay. Um, but you know, they have to fix it. I know. Um, but basically, they did. Uh, too they much. actually spackled and stuff. Believe it or not. <clears throat> Thank you, but it's a lot of peel. You know, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, two months ago, I had asked for the memorial field plan and what was spent and done. And I know tonight, Mrs. Mayor said that the field is being seeded on a weekly basis. They, they've been keeping. If up we're playing football on it every night, why are we seeding it? Has a turf grass manager or? engineer or specialist told us to seed it during football when it's being pounded on every night? I mean, what what has our turf grass committee done? Like, was that their recommendation to seed it? Whose recommendation well, was they've it? They've been keep, keeping up with trying to keep the field in as good as condition as possible. I had a professional a company come in during the summer and do some work. Um, what work was that? So nice. he, they did aerating and seeding. Okay. Yeah, I, I and think fertilizing just, just and I fertilizing. mean, the game plan obviously is there's a committee out there that's trying to figure out what to do with this field. I, I, I know that. In the meantime, we're trying to maintain the field. Uh, but I know when I put seed at my house, I usually, you know, cordon it off so that nobody tramples over the yeah, new I seed. Agree. It's hard. So if we're putting new seed down, we're kind of wasting money. Right. And, you know, there's been, a, there's been an open, you know, problem at Memorial Field. I, I believe, you know, back in June when I'd asked what this committee had done, I said back, you know, as soon as September comes and we have the first cold, all the weeds are dying right now. You can, if you travel out there right now, you can see all the big yellow patches of all the weeds dying. Um, so if we're trying to fix those weed patches with seed while football is playing every night, it's not going to work, Mrs. Mayor. And, you know, I'm sure they're going to ask to have it resodded soon because it looks really bad. And it, 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 is a, it is an embarrassment to our community that it looks so bad. And we were told back in, you know, February and March when I was here that, you know, we were going to do work on it this year, 
and if throwing 50 pounds of seed on it is work for the year, and aerating and seeding it was work, I mean, you know, we've been saying this for years, you know, we, we need to hire a turf grass manager out there, somebody that, that, that has a degree in this, to look at our issues and come up with a real plan. I know you have a committee, and I'm sure they're working diligently and very hard at, at coming up with solutions. However, you know, it, we're in August very, again. We're, we're in September, excuse me, we're in September again, and Memorial still looks the same. It looks the same as it did last September. Bad. Um, you know. So to, to answer your question, Engineer Satil, uh, I've emailed them because I am part of the committee, and, and I, I don't really think the committee has gone, my opinion, in the right direction. But he is going to bring a turf specialist to look at the field. I mean, you know, not just, I mean, a turf specialist that understands grass, soil, et cetera. So he's supposed to bring somebody, I think, this week and next week to look at it. Yeah, he is. But shouldn't we have done that? You know, it's like putting the cart before the horse. You know, yeah, like, I, this is something we should have done back in February to help the football program out have a decent field now in September. Instead of, you know, I'm sitting up here again saying the field looks awful, and we said that it was all going to, all the weeds were going to die as soon as a little a little weather change happened, and that's exactly what happened. And you know, if we're going to throw 50 pounds of seed at it, that's great. Um, we're just throwing money, you know, out the door. Um, so. I'd just like to see more happen with it because it's an important, vital asset to this community. I think it's an embarrassment when you know other towns come here to play. I think it's it's it could be possibly a hazard. I, you know, I don't know what Jif has to say about it. I know people have deemed it a hazard, but I don't know if Jif has deemed it a hazard. But it just it looks disgusting out there, and something needs to be done for all the youth in this town. So I'd like to you know hopefully get some resolution to this soon. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Hold on, David. Can I have that gentleman come up? Oh, sorry. I didn't see. Good evening. Um, James Eric Cobb, 515 Washington Avenue. Um, I just wanted to address the council over um, the parking issue at the high school. Um, watching these council meetings, I've seen people that live on the street that oppose it, that favor it, but not a student's perspective. And the parking issue was because of the amount of juniors that got their licenses halfway through the year and they're not offered parking at the high school. So I understand that on Colonial, what they, some of the students were displaying dangerous behavior, you know, unsafe driving and stuff. Um, but I feel like the council's 16th street parking ban um, did nothing to help it. It only kind of pushed a problem aside until the next grade that's uh, as big as my grade or even bigger comes along and there's not enough parking and when they get their license they're going to have to park on the streets. So I just wanted to ask the council how did they come to um, the current ban they had and what other options were considered? So there have been numerous complaints from residents, safety issues. Uh, we people from our council have also spoken who are involved in emergency services that they can't get fire trucks, ambulances down there. So it was a serious situation. Uh, there's speeding, there's garbage. You know, we're not there, this is what we hear. The residents were not happy with what was being done. When we put the ordinance in, when you block a street off, they moved to another street and then another street. So when we did the ordinance, the idea was to block everything so we don't have to keep redoing the ordinance. I don't imagine you parking down on Mountain Avenue and walking to school, but that's how far we went because we have to protect the areas. Uh, we've met, I've met with the school. I know Mr. Calamari has met with the school. We've tried everything we can. There's no, there's not, you know, we can't get anybody else to park more than what they're doing there. Uh, we did send, I believe, an ord the ordinance to the high school last week, so they have it. Uh, but it became a very serious, dangerous situation for the residents, and you know, safety is is key. Uh, so we looked at that. We had the residents come. The police go on those streets and hand out, you know, information pamphlets, and the residents come back and respond to them. And that's how we did it. 
Um, but I want to also know what other measures were considered when providing parking for high school students. Um, not just, you know, like the high school implemented the shared parking spot, but what has the town done to maybe expand parking or allow or have other lots available in the town? Well, I, I don't believe it's the town's responsibility to provide parking for high school students. I believe it's the high school's responsibility. Uh, and, you know, we attempted to work with them. Uh, and there seemed to be a lack of interest. I believe the mayor had uh, identified the ability to get some grants, uh, but they involved moving some uh, driveways and there was a lack of appetite on the school's part to uh, engage in that discussion. So um, we are, through our ordinance, trying to protect the residents who live on those streets. Uh, if you have a concern about parking at the high school, I, I would suggest that you go to the Board of Ed meeting and voice your concern there because they uh, run the high school. Um, but the high school has implemented a shared parking service and as the town only gets bigger from here on out, there's gonna be bigger grades coming through and eventually the, part, the size there's not enough room at the high school to put any more parking spots. So for the future it has to be considered, what are we gonna do with all the people wanting to park there? And as you know, currently my class is 250 students, we're the biggest, but in five years or so, there's gonna be a class that is almost 300. So are there any future plans to um, deal with the parking issues maybe that will face the high school area? And I know that it is the high school's role to determine how parking has worked, but it is in the township. So it just seems like sometimes the council isn't willing to work with the board, especially you know the comments made at um, a previous meeting. Um, so as I said, are there any future plans for dealing with a bigger problem at the high school? Not that I'm aware of. Can I just ask you a question? Um, I know this year there's 236 seniors, correct? Um, more about 250-ish, but no, yeah. I think it's 236, and last year it was 180. Next year I think there's less seniors, mm -hmm. um, so, and I think it drops a little bit in a couple years after that. So um, we, we have to really look at the demographics of the next few years to see you know, what happens. Uh, if the middle school gets built, that means that uh, the eighth grade moves out of there and there will be less parking spaces needed. So I know you have to like really look at the demographics of the next eight to 10 years um, to see how the classes will grow. Um, also, it, it, as Mr. Ullman said to you, it is the school's responsibility to provide the parking, not the town's responsibility. And um, they, they have made one thing, I think, this year. If people who uh, put two in a car, I think their first preference yeah, or something the, like the that. Yeah, the shared uh, parking service, they, yeah. Okay. So that might help a little bit. Um, but it's not the town's responsibility to provide parking for the school, seriously. And um, they, they have to investigate some of these things themselves. I mean, I do agree. I think also just so th there is property there to put parking. I mean, you know, whether they like it or not, you know, when you pull out of have a driveway, they're parking on the right side. The whole left side is a field. You know, they have to figure out where they're going to accommodate the kids. It's not the town's responsibility. We'll keep saying that. But also you mentioned that, you know, we didn't work with the board. I mean, we've sat with the board. We've met with the board. We've tried everything we can with the board to try and find other alternative parking spots, whether it's across the street, whether it's when they go in the back and they build the field house that maybe they have spots. So, so again, I mean, this is an issue that the, the residents don't need to suffer from, but if you have your opinion and you need to find out where you're gonna park, I would suggest you go to the Board of Ed and, and, and ask them what's, what's the game plan. No, I, I do We have, can only do so much. I period. do have spot to park, but I'm saying for future plans. Yes, the, the grades, um, next grades coming in won't be as large as mine, but down the road five, ten years, there's going to be a grade that is the size of ours or even bigger. 
and it will become a problem again once there's not enough spots. And as I do agree that it is the school's main uh, role to provide the parking, but if it becomes a problem where th there's not enough space at the school, I feel the town also has to take a step in and you know provide some parking. Well, let's hope in 10 years we'll have to look at it then. Okay. But, but thank may, you. May I make a comment? Yes. Uh, first, I want to thank you for coming to a council meeting. You're a very well-spoken young man and appreciate you getting involved in an issue like this. Um, I went to the last Board of Education meeting, spoke to them about parking. Um, there's a little over 400 spots available at the high school property, of which they're only allocating 137 to students. Um, I don't think that's right. Um, if they were run like a business, you have to s supply your customers with places to park. Um, I suggested that they look into uh, having the staff carpool to free up some of the spaces. I also recommended that maybe they look at renting an off-site parking lot and have the staff and faculty be bussed back and forth to that parking lot because it's a big thing with safety. So you want to get as many kids right on the property as you can uh, to not have them on the streets. Uh, they didn't have answers to my questions, but on a follow-up, uh, when I placed it to them, they said, if we don't answer your question at that meeting, we will a meeting or two afterwards when they've gathered the facts. Um, so that's what I can add to what you're bringing up. Okay, thank, thank you, you, you very much. Bob, if you don't mind, let me just make a quick comment. Uh, you know, I understand that this is a large class, and there's been classes at Westwood High School 300 plus. Uh, luckily, I wasn't in one of those classes, but close to it. Um, and parking never seemed to be an issue before. But you have to remember, we have an eighth grade there, which requires faculty, okay? If the eighth grade moves down to uh, Westwood at the middle school, you're going to take those faculty spots out. So you don't need, uh, let's see, a fifth of those parking spots. That increases parking, okay? The state mandates in education some positions that are basically unfunded, but we need staff there in the school. That requires parking spots. I don't think it's a feasible uh, idea, and I, I, wish we could, I wish we had a spot in the township. We have trouble getting commuter parking, let alone commuter parking for high school students. I don't think, uh, or high school teachers and uh, faculty is almost an impossibility. And you have to remember the school is not required to provide parking spots for any student whatsoever. They're mandated to provide an education. The student is required to get the school or the parent is required to get the student to school. It's not required to have parking spots for anyone other than their faculty. So again, I think the school, I wish there was more space, I can't create it. If we had a volcano, maybe we could, but we really can't. Um, so I wish we could help you out, but it just doesn't seem feasible at this time. So. I hope everything works out in the future. Right. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. David Snide, 91 Windsor Circle in the township. I just want to go back to the crossing signs that uh, Madam Mayor, you mentioned, and I've been mentioning for years about the crosswalk signs here. It's on my iPhone. We have some of these signs around different places. And I have a couple of questions. One, why couldn't we add um, to the sign that where it shows two people to say, it's a state law, you must stop for pedestrians? That's number one. Just take the regular diamond signs that you have around the town, and someone can make a metal sign to say, it's the law, before someone gets killed. And, and then we say, then you do something. God forbid, <coughs> I've been here since forever. 2005 for me, that's a long time, okay? <laughs> and so I moved to the town, and, and, and it seems like every year at the council meetings, I fight for this crossing situation. Now I have another alternative for you. When you have the banner you've been hanging across for the, you know, for the band concert that you have, and you're going to be hanging the band con, you're going to be hanging for town day, a, a, a banner across. Why can't we put a nice sign that shows pedestrians on it, 
and says, it's the law, you must stop. What's wrong with that? That's being proactive for a town. And that will solve the problem. You can't say you didn't see it because you obviously have the banners across, you had it for the band concert, and now you're gonna have it for the town meeting. Let's do this ASAP and stop procrastinating because someone in the police department maybe has another idea. This is, no one's gonna hit the sign that's overhead. No one's gonna hit the crosswalk sign that's on the pedestrian thing if you have a, I don't care how you light it up or what you do, but just says it's the law. Let's protect our town. Every other town has it. Please do this. Shouldn't have to have someone who's 90 years old have to keep saying it, just like we did for the cell phone tower for all the years I lived here and we finally got it, okay? So please recognize this. Um, on 501 just, just Washington. One, one question, can yeah. we actually add more to the bottom of that yellow sign? Well, there is a bottom here. No, I'll, I'll just say it, I'll, I'll check mm -hmm. it out. Yeah, but if not, is there a law against the banner across the thing, Madam Mayor? Do you know What's that? A, is there a law against a banner? Cross, it's the law. Stop I for know. pedestrians. Even if you do it Monday through Friday, <laughs> no, yeah, kids are here. I know. Right, Trucker would right see it. It's a simple thing. You just got to notify the county that you're hanging a banner up at this you, you particular You do have to get location. county approval. Yeah. Yeah, but I would think to save a life is pretty important. It's not a stoplight. It's just. Don't, a don't we buy one of those signs that they put in the street that you can put text on it? That's what I. Yeah, the, that's police, the police, the police uh, thing. Oh, well, it's actually part of the capital budget. Yeah, didn't we buy that? They're pricing it right now. It's on the tracker. Yeah. David, just a quick comment. You better hope the person you referred to as being 90 is truly 90. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm 85, so maybe. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming he's Are you referring to Mr. Okay. Burnbrook? <laughs> okay. Maybe he's older. I don't know. <laughs> all right, David. Come on, David. All right. The other thing is, just to mention to you, you, uh, you all know I'm a realtor in town. Uh, 501 is on the market for 250000 Okay? It's 990 square feet. Uh, okay? It's been active on the market. Um, it shows the latest uh, uh, company that had it as of May uh, was Caldwell Banker, but I can check it out for you because I didn't even know that place existed till I just went an aerial view of it on uh, on Google Earth, and I can see the house, and I can see the backyard, and you can see everything. Just so you should know, you could always Google an address anywhere, and you can see what it is. Thank God for Google Earth, so you should know what it is. Um, you know, I didn't know about the parking space problem. I commuted many years to New York, and fortunately, where I live, I can just walk across the street and get, and get the bus. Um, I must have missed that when I heard about this situation, but I would think for our revenue standpoint, that not that we're doing it for revenue, but if we make the prices high enough for the people that we're going to have for the amount of spaces, if that's the issue, I don't see that as a problem. And then you'd solve the problem. Then you wouldn't have other people complaining about things. This is it. This is our parking thing. Whether they park. If you pay for the parking space and you purchase it, you're entitled to it. If you don't want to use it, then don't use it, but pay for it. But charge enough so we have enough for this, you know, spaces for the people. And I, I know you're Council President. You're saying to oversell or not to oversell? No, I don't want you to oversell. All right, so, so we did increase the price and we have, we, you know, it's, we have 35 spots and it's a different value for each spot now to what you just said, if that's what you... If well, well, I guess what I'm saying, I thought we had 65 permits. Yeah, we did. Not, not 65 spots. Oh. You have 65 permits and 35 spots. spots. That is an uh-oh. That's a problem. That's overselling. <laughs> that's really overselling. Okay. So how do you, how do you solve that oversell? Did less I, production, less production. That's did I hear you right? That house that we just saw the pictures on, two fifty, fifty thousand. Yeah, just go right on. You can go on Google, or I mean, it seems like a good value for a piece of property in town. I mean, why don't we do that for one of no, our? Uh, it'd be a knock me down. It's a knock me down. Uh, I just on, saw it. Okay, sorry about that. That's wow. all right. All right. We'll um, keep you on track. The <laughs> the other thing was on the school thing. I did go to the school board. My, my children 
we were in another town, Upper Saddle River, for most of our lives. Um, and when I moved here, you know, I really got involved in the council meetings, not in the board meetings, but I was at the last board meeting because I was concerned about these spots in town. And as you say, Councilman Calamari, there's 263 spots. Is the way I see it. There's 400 and there's 137, that's 263, right. that are available. And I, I, I didn't talk at the meeting because I, I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I'm not there, so there's no sense of me really talking. But I don't understand why we can't utilize the, the high school's parking spots if they have them there, just as a citizen of the town, a resident. Why can't we utilize some of the parking spaces? That's all I'm saying to you. And I know, Madam Mayor, you've talked every year to them to see what, what can be done. Rather than having situations where an ambulance or a fire department truck can't get by and then we have to close down the streets. I think it's incumbent on them to come up with the solution if they have the space there. It doesn't sound like a difficult problem. It sounds like someone just doesn't want to respond. That's my opinion of it. Um, I think I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Just get me that banner, Madam Mayor, please. At least for I don't know me. about the Listen, banner. <laughs> let me ask you something. How about for town day, we try an experiment. We get a banner that says, please stop for pedestrians for town day. And then maybe you can keep it up a little longer. That's my suggestion. Thank you. That's a good compromise. Maybe we'll have our electric sign that said we can put it on that print, you know? We have one of getting one of those signs that can say it. Oh yeah, the sign. We ordered one. Oh. We're ordering one or doing something. So I know they're not cheap, but but it's it's gonna save no. someone's life. And I think that's important. I want I, I just wanted to mention what Nichols did over across the way is phenomenal. Yeah. That the that supermarket from a standpoint of real estate and bringing people into the town is magnificent. If any of you haven't been in there, please go in there. Um, all I can tell you, it's gonna compete with the new Wegmans that's coming in, which is enormous in Montvale. King's people will start to get over here. This is all gonna help the town on what's happening. And Madam Mayor, I'm happy you mentioned two more. I, I think that two, two, two new stores because Nicholas Marcus is doing so well. Other, it's, you know. it's, I, I met the owners and I gotta tell you, I was so excited. And I'm very happy with the owners of the mall, with the owner, the son, I guess, um, what they did in the front just now. Mm -hmm. I thought they were planting um, uh, turf grass, but actually it's like, you know, artificial, but it looks nice. And look at the flowers they did in the front. So. That is our town. That's what we should be proud of. And those we'll crosswalks to show Thank you. that it's safe. Thanks. Bye. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. oh, well, let's have Rosa first and then you, Joe. Come on, Rosa. Okay. Rosa Dambra, 423 Colonial Boulevard. I am very surprised that nobody up here, and even the Board of Education, hasn't brought this up. There is a state law that the school system has to provide busing for their school children, whether they're seniors or in kindergarten. Now, why hasn't anybody brought this up at the school board meeting, and neither has the uh, school board at Rose? other meetings. Rose? You can look that up, I don't have the paperwork. They have to provide. Now, they're just ignoring everything. No, I think it's a certain distance. It's certain. They do provide. It has to have to be a year, uh, one mile from the school. No, two. No. Two. No. Two. 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 two point something. Oh, now it's two miles? Two miles. Two miles. Okay, but, a lot of them do live in Westwood. That's two miles. And you've got some seniors that come down Lincoln Avenue, come down uh, uh, Colonial, and just speed to Ridgewood. I live on Colonial. They're still speeding. And I don't know why the police don't give these people tickets just because they live in town. They have to give them tickets. 
whether the town likes it or not, we don't, there, there's no such law that says because you live in town you don't get a speeding ticket. And I think it should look into that. I think the school itself is ignoring uh, certain state laws because there are a lot of students that do live in Westwood that live, oh, what well, you said now it's two miles. They're not providing bus service. And it could be even a couple of seniors, too. And let's face it, the parents today don't want their kids walking to school. They give them a car, and they let them be happy. Now let's get to the uh, parking spot at uh, the, the firehouse. How much do you charge now to park in the parking uh, in the uh, firehouse? How much? Two hundred. Two hundred for real? For real. We we charge our taxpayers that pay into the tax system two hundred dollars. Yes. I'm sorry, ma'am. If you'd like to come up, you can come up afterwards. But we can't just have the audience yelling. I Thank don't you. believe this. This is terrible. I mean, what are we doing for our taxpayers? We're not doing anything. We just. More fees, more fees. What do you do with this money? Where does this money go, this $200 go? Anybody know? I mean, if it's going for the fire department, they need clothes. Is it going for trucks? Is it going for the new it's building? Fungible and it goes but if, into if the it's general? going into the coffers just to bring up the capital, that's not good. It's fungible. It's fungible. Fungible. It oh. comes into this. It comes into the Sorry. town, and it's used to pay expenses. So it could be going to the fire department. It could be going to the police department. It could be going to put paper into the copier. But it comes into the town as a source of revenue. I think you're charging a little bit too much to our taxpayers. I think I, I think uh, we're getting a little too ritzy in this town when it comes to charging the taxpayers. I don't think that's right. And has uh, since the new church went into the new uh, the Jewish Y, they have extra sp parking spots mm -hmm. all the way in the back. Mm -hmm. Has the town asked them? Can we borrow a couple of spots and give, them, and give them a stipend, you know, a contribution, you know, over the table? Not that I'm aware of. No? Nope. We Not can't that do I'm that? Ask the, ask the lawyer. Well, over the table, I'm assuming, is not under the table, so. so no, we don't, the, men over, we don't mention that. that, that no, that's, the, that's another story. Over the table is okay. I mean, you, you can pay for something outright. But I mean, uh, can, can, can the town do that? The can the town ask the, of, uh, the new uh, church <laughs> building that was once the Y if we can use some of those spots for our taxpayers to, at least they can walk down the block to get the bus to go to work? That's a good idea, right? Certainly can ask. Will you have them look into that? Yeah. I don't do that. Not 13, David. What? Go on. Go on. No? No good? No, no, no. Gonna, no, no, no. Go on. All right. Check that out. Another thing. I like the beautification of the town. As I walk around, I see the Johnny pumps have been painted. But you miss two on, on Bridgewood Road. One between Colonial and Woodfield Road, and one between Pascac Road, and uh, uh, right next to the Seven Chimneys House. Is that part of our contract? What, what, what did you, I didn't hear the word. The fire, John, fire, fire, fire hydrants. hydrants. Just so you the know, Johnny pumps. There's some that aren't painted. Well, no, we don't, we don't do that. United Water did not, last year, actually, in water. response well, to Mrs. Osmond's question. I raised it with United Water, and they said they were planning to do them in this town. They do the town, every town, like every seven years or something like that. They were going to be replacing a few outright. Those might be the ones they're replacing outright, and therefore, therefore they didn't. They've, they've done quite a few already in our town. I know that. And, and they're continuing, but... Um, I don't think they should phase out that one in front of the no, seven chimneys. No, not phase out. Replace them. Replace them with new ones. Oh, oh. Okay. So I will check with them. Oh, okay. Sorry. 
I will check with them. The, and see the heaven they, is going. Yeah. I'll see if they missed them, and if not, I'll ask them to do them. But I'll ask them why they didn't. Yeah, because the, that, especially that Johnny Pump, is very important in front of that old building. Yeah, they, they've been doing, I've, I've noticed quite a few. I don't know what their game plan is or how they allocate, how many people go there and do them each day, but. Do we pay for that? We pay well, for we that. Pay, well, we, we pay, pay them yeah, we pay them $144,000. We pay for that? $144, what else, Rosa? Because I've seen them painting them in Hillsdale. But Rosa, we, what else do you have? Okay, oh, pushy, pushy. Okay, <laughs> hold on. All right, uh, another beautification. There's only maybe two benches in Clarkfield outside of the gates. We could use some new benches. So you don't have to sit on the uh, iron boards to watch a baseball game with the kids. And there's only one left on, on uh, Woodfield, uh, no, on uh, Ridgewood Road. Can we have another one? for a couple of seniors that walk and would like to sit in between their uh, long uh, excursions through town. Where's that? On Woodfield. There's only one on of, um, Ridgewood Road on Fern Street. Ridgewood the only Road. one left, the, the only old, bench the left. Old bus stop. Yeah. The old, that was an old bus stop. Yeah, that's right. Can we have another one in town on of, uh, Ridgewood Road to help some of the uh, seniors that walk? We'll We'll and want to relax after a long walk? We'll put it on the list. Instead of sitting on the curb like I've seen a couple of people? Whoever you, whoever you put those garbage cans from, I forget that. What was that group? What's that? The, whoever you got the garbage cans from. It was the, it was the a grant from somebody, wasn't it? Garbage can? Yeah. The grant, the, the grant for the... Uh, oh, the, no, the it wasn't a grant. Yeah. Clean Community oh. you talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. The one at the bridge and then yeah, the clean one at the park hmm. at Clark okay. Field. Uh, we'll one more, down. one more, one All more. Right. All right. One more. Uh, what seconds. happened to the uh, crosswalk by the library? The only library in Bergen County that doesn't have a crosswalk. I step off the curve and they want to hit my hips. We put that. I mean, down they there. don't even stop at the stop sign. They go right through the stop sign and make a turn. Right. We'll put it down again. It is bad. It is bad. I mean, we. I mean. We as pedestrians, people were here first before cars. And I think you should take care of us first before the cars. Gotcha. And that's it. You wrote Thank that you. down? Bye. I did. I did write it down. Crosswalk at library. Joe, did you want to go? You, I know you had your hand up. No, Joe fell asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done? All right. Here in the night 60 Adams place. Something I really wasn't going to talk about, but I will talk about now, is the parking for the commuters. I did the parking for the commuters for about 28 years. We've had the same procedure, giving more spots out than we had. We had counted the spots many times. When Mr. Sears and Mr. Calmary were elected to the council, Mr. Sears, I don't know what who had said something to him, or maybe it had to do with his running for, when he ran for office. But one of his first project, it seemed, was to do something about the parking at the firehouse. Now, being the clerk in the town for the last 11 years, before you know I had left, I would know if there had been a problem with people parking there. Very, very few times did I ever have a complaint. Mr. Bruno, you said that you park at different places. I don't ever remember you applying for a permit. Uh, as the ladies said who were here, and I don't know any of them other than I recognized a few of them from coming to me all these years, and most of them were there during my tenure. Uh, a lot of people don't take the, the, the parking space every single day. And it's always been said at the bottom of that letter, First come, first serve. There was a problem where they, they decided at some point, and I know Janet remembers all of this. This is not something she does not remember. There was a problem, and a, a letter was gone out. A special letter went out to all of the residents who had permits, and we were explaining what it was, and that you know, if you got there and there was none, you had to realize that if you applied, you know. But people felt that if they applied, they could come. Now, you know, I pick my battles sometimes here. I have to, because there's too many of them. And 
I didn't say anything. I was actually away and I wasn't around during this whole time. But why this has become such a major problem, I really don't understand. It never was. Some women work, or men also, I mean, surprisingly, there were women that were here. They work one day a week. Two, my daughter had a permit, and she did it about three times a year that she would actually use that permit. So her spot was always available to people. I mean, not that people had to know that. They didn't. She paid for her spot. Our spots at that time were it was 25. It started out, went to 50. Then finally it was decided that 100, and now 200. Uh, the, the ladies are right. They've been doing it the same way and have really not had a problem. Uh, the mayor always said to me that the police checked. I made sure that no one got a parking spot if they didn't show me their license, their registration for the cars. And I had problems sometimes because cars weren't registered to the house because they were leased vehicles. Well, you have to understand I took very careful watch about what happened there. And if there was ever a problem, I went to the police, I talked to them, they came to me. It, it, it was not a major, I don't know, I would like to see that list also of all the people who have complained. Because I find that a, a little hard to believe that in a three year span, this has become such a problem that we've actually had to change everything, upset, and a lot of those ladies are very, very upset over this. And, and you know, we can't please everybody and I realize that. But there weren't that many problems, or you know, every once in a while, one, two a year. There was one gentleman one year time who was very angry. You're going to always have that with whatever you do in this town, whether it's the kids parking somewhere or the, you know, people parking at the firehouse. And yes, it's a good idea that you know maybe the red house shouldn't be there anymore. It's outlived its use. But as one of the ladies said to me, well, because I did go outside with them. What is it going to take another two or three years to tear that house down and get us a spot? And she's right. It will take two or three years to do that. This won't happen overnight. Uh, I would hope that this council could rethink. I think it would be very good at this time of year for them to rethink what they did with that ordinance. Because has anybody seen this list of all the complaints? Mr. Oman, have you seen a list of complaints? I have not. Okay, I'll go to this side now. Have you seen a list? No. Have you seen a list? Yes. Okay, have you seen a list? No. Have you I, seen a I've list? I've also seen a list when you were administrator, when you were the town clerk, you would, uh, you sold close to 70 spots sometimes. Well, it was the ordinance, I didn't yeah, sell. It was whatever the, the ordinance You the did council. not do a proper verification. Oh, oh Mr. On, Sears. Let, let me finish, I listened to you when you said I was running and I took on this project. You did. We took on the Is project because the commuters were parking in the fire department spots. And that's when we took the project on to say you cannot park in the fire department spots. And then when I went to you, you looked at it and I asked you, how do you verify these? And your comment to me was, well, they come in and they fill out the paperwork and I look at their driver's license. That's I what you copies told me. These are their driver's licenses. Okay. You didn't, you didn't say anything Don't else. Go look in the files, they're yep. there. Yep. Go look in the files. Well, go on, go on, go on. Well, anyway, so I mean, I'm just asking because I really don't think it was as major of a problem as it seems to have been made into. And, you know, and th that's a very good, difficult situation. Also, Mr. and Mrs. Cop I've known for many years. And let me tell you, the house next door to the cops, when the people were living in the house, where it's a disaster, and they have complained before, this is not a new thing. It's gotten to the point where they can't, I, I didn't know they were gonna be here, that they can't stand it anymore. But that house has been a problem. The, this, that house wanted to turn their driveway away from Washington Avenue to Fern Street. I think someone made a message. And they'd come in front of the board and the residents all came out and they yelled and screamed and then they, they stopped it. They decided not to do that because they were going to build a brand new house on that property. Mm -hmm. And ever since they did that, it, it, oh, no, no, wait. Everybody had 15, 20 minutes tonight. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Hold on a minute, okay? They didn't have 15, 20 minutes. I had six people sitting here. If they all came up and did five minutes each, it would have been 30 minutes. You're well, over, you're five, right. you're you're over right. five minutes you're now. Right. I didn't cut you off. I said one more minute. So you're over five minutes. I mean, if you want to argue the time, we can argue the time. Okay, but it, okay? we can do I, that. I, I, so I go ahead. For the certain issue. Well, so go ahead. So say the certain issue. The issue was the, uh, you amended, you're amending 17-10, the salary ordinance. I was away during your salary ordinance the regular salary ordinance. The Department of Recreation Superintendent 
May I ask how many hours and days she works? I don't know what her it's, schedule is. It's four, four days, four and days. I believe it's five days. It's 20 hours a week. 20 hours a week. Okay, the ordinance was, in the regular salary ordinance was $9,963. That was a mistake. Okay, no, no, I understand that. I can figure that out. And the new amendment uh, says 19968 Now, I understand you may be giving her a $10,000 raise, but why are you giving her a $10,005 raise? No, we're not, it's not a raise. What it is is... Oh, no, no, but that $5 no, seems to be the 3 and the 8. No, it, the, the number is the math for extrapolating the hours that she, the, the rate she's getting paid times the hours she's going to work times 52. The old, the former superintendent had many hats she wore. That's right. No, I. And I the nine thousand was based on what she would have been. The portion of her salary would have been. Right. No. So it has nothing to do with a, a raise from the nine thousand to the other amount. It, it's it's compensation to two different people. But it's the same amount that the other superintendent had made. It's the same thing. Mrs. Coastal made $9,963. No, that's, what her. I, well, that's why it was a mistake and why it was in the ordinance to begin with. The new person in that position uh, was elevated into that role and took it on on a more full-time basis, and that was a negotiated salary. Okay, so then you're telling me that that is for 20 hours a week. This is the amount of money that she will be making for 20 hours a week. I believe that is off the top of my head. I believe those okay. are the. All right, I can multiply that myself. Uh, what else, three. Marianne? Okay. I oh, won't be able to finish the rest, but then that's normal. Thank you. No, I, I don't think it's normal, first of all. Second of all, let me just say something else to you. You, you talk about me never applying for a permit. Uh, I take the bus. I take the bus from my house. I can walk down there. However, I don't get I don't get seats because all the buses are full. So I drive to different towns so that I can take transportation. And number one, number two, you had plenty of time, more time than the five minute limit, and I, I kept everybody on the same limit. So so don't make a comment because I don't appreciate the fact that you say is as usual. Because up here, our meetings go to midnight. And we're not excited about going to midnight, but we go to midnight so that people can come up and voice their opinion more than the five minutes. And I take a lot of heat from it from people here because it's a late night. So, you know, if you want to come up and make comments, that's fine. But don't, don't make the remarks as if you're not getting fair time. Joe. Hi, Joe Durso, 12 Viola Terrace. Bob, you're very lenient with me. I used to get criticized too, you know, one o'clock in the morning, but that's, that's, that's fine. You know, uh, suggestion, change of regime coming soon, either side, doesn't matter, but maybe you should do what other towns do. I mean, you wanna give fairness to the public, you know, you don't get the type of crowd that you always get here, but you seem to get the regulars and it seems to eat up your time. You have a planner that's probably sitting here on the clock that you're going to pay. Why don't you do, you know, a suggestion, keep it in the back of your heads, both of you. Do a public session after the meeting once a month one, and do a public session in the beginning. You, you can get a lot of work done that way. I mean, you know, you, it's great to hear what everybody says, but it's just a suggestion. Um, you know, I heard, I'm glad one person came back who spoke about the parking. That's great. I wasn't going to talk about it tonight. You know, Pete, you brought up parking. The young gentleman who left also, Ray, who left, says people, you know, should stick around. I know they can watch it on uh, television. But, you know, there, I'll bring up, I'll, I'll hash way back in 2011. You had a plan on the table. You guys all know it. You need to do it. All right? You need to do the corner. You had, a, you had a great deal in place with the corner, with the bus going in, your compu commuter parking would have been solved <laughs> over there on those properties. You, it, it, it was blown away. You guys, you, whatever, we lost it. But you know, that, that's, that's something that needs to be done. That will solve commuter parking. Yeah, the house is a great thing. It'll probably take three years. But that's where you're, the, right there in that corner. The corner needs to be done. Maybe the town, because Helen Bond looks like they're having a hell of a time selling it. Maybe the town should, Convince the county to buy or something. Just you know, be proactive in your thinking. But that corner will solve your commuter parking and probably help everybody. That's that's one issue. 
I still have an issue, and you know, you know, maybe a lightning bolt will come down. Pete, you were involved with this. The church, the church, you know, the young man was here. Not one of you brought up the church. I mean, I think you were alluding to it, but that church should be a good neighbor and give up 20 or 30 spots, maybe not for the kids, for, for, for the administrators. You know, I mean, you're sitting here saying, okay, well, Janet brought up a great point. Maybe the enrollment's gonna go down. Or maybe we're gonna spend $30 million on a new school and, and that, that all the parking would be gone there. Real simple fix for short term. The, the church should be a good neighbor and lend, and lend you that parking lot for a short period of time. Tom, I took a lot of criticism out there. You, I kind of relate to you because I shoot my mouth off a lot of times. Maybe it was the wrong thing to do, calling for somebody's resignation. But you know what? Your emotions got in the way. You're passionate. I don't think the, uh, the superintendent needs to resign. I just think he needs to work with the town. You know what? Everybody, exactly. honestly, politics is great. But you know what? The bottom line is, that's everybody being politically correct with all the statements that they said out there. Let, let's face facts. I mean, everybody needs to work together in this town, but that corner is your main issue. Last issue, I'm going to take up your five minutes. Uh, most of you know I am dead against what you're going to do tonight with these ordinances with affordable housing. Think twice about it. There's people out there fighting. You have an assembly woman out there fighting. You have, I brought it up to you guys the last time, you know, I'm friendly with the Elizabeth mayor and the Clark, New Jersey mayor. They're fighting. Why aren't you guys fighting? You're sitting back and you're just going to let our town be overdeveloped in five to ten years. And you're not, it's not you're, you're, then you, you think you got parking problems now if you don't do anything about it? You got to put a plan together. So that's all I'm saying. Think before you do it because there's people fighting. Hold on, Ralph. So he's talking about the season's property. So, so, uh, 2000, Joe, the bridal, the bridal shop? Joe yes. just so you understand, I mean, you, you talk about the uh, partnering with the church. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, it, I don't know what else to say other than that we've gone back and forth with them. No, I know you're not, but I'm just saying I want people to understand. I mean, Mr. Mr. Calamari has been back and forth with this to try and partner with them. So. You know, we, we, we've, we've gone through it. You know, we talk about the intersection. Again, <laughs> we put money in the budget for engineers. We put money in the budget to buy land. We don't have the authority to move certain projects forward. So months, next year, I think things will be forward, different. Will. Yeah, forward, I agree. Will. Okay. So you've got to be progressive. Anybody else? I see no hands. Motion to close. So, so moved. moved. <laughs> Second. Councilman Calamari. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Allman. Yes. Councilman President Bruno. Yes. Okay, we'll move into uh, ordinances. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. Here we go. We're trying to finish. So, uh, first of all, we do have the ordinances. Our planner is here. Mr. Paul is here. So, if there's open and there are questions, hopefully we'll have the. The answer. So, ordinance number 17-13, an ordinance of the Township of Washington County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, amending 239 of the Township Code entitled Land Development, Chapter 238 of the Township Code entitled Housing Trust Fund, and Article 17 of Chapter 5 of the Township Code entitled Municipal Housing Liaison, <clears throat> to address the requirements of the New Jersey Fair Housing Act and the New Jersey Uniform Housing Affordability Controls as they pertain to compliance with municipal affording housing obligations. <clears throat> Motion to open, uh, resolution number 17-290, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for ordinance 17-13. So moved. Second. Councilman Kilmore. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. Is there anybody that would like to, uh, the, uh, do, do, Ken, would you like Stan to uh, yes, be yeah, at the could table? Yeah, could you be the, uh, come up here, Stan? Yes, come on up, David. Do we have to open the public session? No, I thought we did. No, I thought that. Oh, sorry. The sign the ordinance of the affordable, correct? It's one of the ordinances. One of the ordinances. Okay. Just say your name, My, David. David Snide, 91 Windsor Circle. Um, I don't know how to open this, except that I'm a realtor in town, and I'm very concerned about the overlay that we did here on the ordinance. I think uh, it's one of the towns, There's not every town has done this. One of the towns that is doing it is us, 
and I'm concerned about the future ramifications of what we're doing. I know I've been told that the overlay is just being done as an overlay. It doesn't mean that we're going to be buying properties in town. Uh, you know, i.e., if a church goes out, we buy the property, we put it into affordable, or churches go out and we put it into affordable. I just think the precedent that we're putting in on this ordinance is detrimental to the town, especially as a realtor who knows a little bit about this from real estate standpoint. I think it was wrong for the town to pass this ordinance. Now, to ask you questions, what the overlay, I, what I would like well, to know well, is what the I, overlay. Can I, can I just, can yeah. I just interrupt? We're Go ahead. not on the overlay ordinance. We're on the, uh, we're on the affordable housing ordinance. Well, that, can I, yeah. can I, if you're gonna ask specifically about the overlay, then can we just wait till the public hearing on the overlay? Whatever you, whatever you I, want. I, I didn't know. You know I'm just giving that kind of a question. If it's, if it's things in general. Yeah, we got we to, your questions need to pertain to the ordinance so that when I open the public Oh, okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll all right, I apologize. It'll be that's, that's all right. right. Yeah. I apologize. So it would be 17-16 is the overlay, I believe? Okay, then I'll refrain. Okay. Yes. It's 16 Yeah, 17 a. Is there anybody else that wants to address this, this ordinance for public? No, I see no hands. Motion to close public for ordinance 17-13. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Councilman Calamari. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 17-13 at second reading by title. Motion, please. <coughs> so moved. Second. Bob, uh, would this be the time to ask a question or two? Yes. But from us up here? Yeah, if you have a question about the planner or myself, uh, yeah. Actually, probably both of you. Okay. Um, and I don't. <coughs> and just as a preliminary thing, the planning board did did find they did pass their uh, report saying that it's consistent with the uh, amendment to the uh, to the master plan. Okay. So we have that on file. Okay. Um, I don't know if it applies to this ordinance or one of the others, but it's a in general question. Um, we worked hard. We've put a lot of money into the settlement. Um, but if this, if the people that are fighting this at the state level are fortunate enough to get it overturned and we have our thing in place, can we then file to undo our plan uh, based on the fact that it was overturned, that all these municipalities would have to, you know, do this unfortunate act? Okay, I'll, I'll take the first crack at this. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, there's no way to really absolutely answer that question. I'll just give, I, you, a, it's I'll future. Just, I'll just give you a, a kind of a, a perspective for it, the way the way I see it. First of all, I know that there's a, this move to uh, stop affordable housing and stop, you know, the, the concept of affordable housing. Unfortunately, there's been movements of this nature since 1975. They've been all unsuccessful. The, the governor tried to do it. The legislature has not done it. Courts have done it. Uh, the Supreme Court is the ultimate arbiter of this concept. Um, Mount Laurel is here, and it's it's not going away. Uh, yes, and I and I take uh, uh, you know notice that obviously there are towns that are fighting, and we fought also. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's not a question of anybody laying down and saying this is a great idea, and let's just do affordable housing, and, and this is great. But uh, the reality is, is that the courts will decide for you what your fair share will be and how it will be implemented if it doesn't have a settlement that it approves, okay? Now, uh, I, I think it sounds very good, and, I'm, and I'm, I love the idea of people fighting for the legislature to act, mm -hmm. and I would think that the legislature, if they're going to act, would probably do something about addressing not just Washington Township, but many towns throughout the state are settling their cases. Right. And even those towns that aren't settling the cases, if they try the cases, there will be judgments. So by time, legislation could be passed, if it's passed, and if it sustains a challenge to the Supreme Court, which is another issue, uh, th then the question would be, will the legislature address giving a remedy to towns who have either settled or have been adjudicated by the courts, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. So as we sit here today, 
I've never, I've not seen legislation. I don't know of any bill that's pending, uh, you know, to undo Mount Laurel. Uh, I've not heard of any case pending to overturn the Supreme Court, which decided the Supreme Court case in March 2015. So uh, that that's kind of the best scenario I can give. If, if Stan, if you want to add anything, be my guest. Uh, Stan, can you just say your name and address for once, and then we'll have it for a file, please? Sure, and make sure it's uh, the mic on. Okay. Um, yes, it's Stan Slahetka. Uh, I'm from TNM Associates, and uh, we're the uh, the township planner and the consultant that uh, the township is using with regards to the affordable housing plan. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I think you know Ken really summarized it you know very uh, very well. Um, I I'd only add uh, two things. Uh, first of which, in your actual settlement agreement, um, you have a uh, there's a provision that states that if there's some sort of court determination. Um, uh, statewide that uh, that actually lowers your actual obligation by 20 percent or more of what the the township settled on that the township has the the right to to, to petition the court for acceptance of that that lower number uh, which then would be credited to the to the township uh, for future uh, affordable housing obligations and the second thing is and I would echo uh, Ken's um, statement that uh, we just don't know what the legislative action may be um, and so I think the township just needs to continue to monitor that and if there are avenues that uh, are presented to it to get a more beneficial result uh, that would be permitted uh, through uh, uh, through the legislative process through state enactments you know clearly I think the township uh, um, you know should take advantage of those if they're available to them okay. thank you Councilman Kilmore. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. Ordinance number 17-14, <clears throat> an ordinance of the Township of Washington County of Bergen, the State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 239, entitled Land Development, to impose a mandatory affordable housing set-aside requirement on new multi-residential development. Resolution 17-291, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for Ordinance 17-14. Motion. Motion. Second. Councilman Calamari. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. So, Ken, can you just explain yeah, this, this one so yeah, we can yeah, have this people come up? This ordinance really is, it's almost self-activated by the town in some form. Uh, basically, if the... Um, if a zoning board gives a, a variance for multifamily housing uh, in excess five units or more, then the set aside would be activated. So it does take the zoning board doing something of that nature. If the town decides to rezone areas, this ordinance would be, uh, you know, uh, activated, so to speak. Uh, so basically. This is something that's kind of in the control of the of the town or one of its agencies. Okay, so uh, this mandatory set aside occurs only if the town, through its council or one of its agencies, creates this multifamily situation. Then the set aside would be activated. You have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, uh, two things. Uh, first of which, um, uh, this is um, this approach is required by the settlement with the Fair Share Housing Center, and it's a, a, a typical and common uh, a component uh, to address unmet need that uh, is required uh, by by settlement agreements where a municipality is receiving a vacant land adjustment, and, and Washington <laughs> Township is receiving a, la a vacant land adjustment that reduces its its immediate. Uh, affordable housing obligation and as Ken said uh, the only time that this actually uh, becomes in effect is if in fact a variance is granted for new multi-family residential development um, or if the uh, the township takes say an action to create new multi-family residential uh, zones one thing that's important and it's specified in the in the ordinance and and that is uh, this mandatory provision uh, it does not um, provide a justification for a developer to come in and ask for the variance so that uh, a, a developer can't go before the Zoning Board of Adjustment and simply say, well, you have this ordinance on the books, therefore you are obligated to approve my proposed development. Uh, they have to uh, provide all the requisite proofs 
that uh, any uh, applicant before the Zoning Board of Adjustment would have to do to, uh, to prove that there are special reasons uh, for the grant of the variance. And it's very, there's a very clear statement uh, in the ordinance about that. Thank you. So I believe we're at the any questions? Uh, I see no hands. Motion to close the public hearing. For, oh, sorry. Sorry, Marianne. Hearing all of the 960 Adams Place. just one question. I wasn't around for any of this. It says affordable housing units may be provided on site or off site within the township. Now, I don't understand what that means. Uh, if, in fact, the uh, development that's approved um, as part of the, that development, the, uh, um, the say the Zoning Board of Adjustment allows for the provision of the, uh, or the approves of the development, and as part of that development that um, there is a, another property that's made part of that overall approval where the affordable units are to be, uh, be provided, uh, you'd have the market rate units on one site and the affordable units on, on another site. But all within, uh, all within the township? Yes, this is not a, and, and that's a very good question, this is not a, what's called, commonly known as a regional contribution agreement or a payment. Oh, so that's what I was going to ask. That's right. Okay. Or a payment in lieu of construction. Right, that's this, exactly what my question was. Yeah, that's not, the, that's not, that would be permitted as part of that. Oh, okay, so it would be. All right, thank you. Okay. Motion to close public hearing. Anybody else? So motion to close public hearing ordinance 17-14. So moved. Second. Councilman Gilmore? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Cedar? Yes. Councilman Elman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Ordinance 17-15, an ordinance of the Township of Washington no, County. No, 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 motion to adopt ordinance number 17-14 at second reading by title. So moved. Second. Councilman Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilman President Bruno? Yes. Ordinance 17 15, an ordinance of the Township of Washington County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 239A of the Township Code entitled Development Fees to update provisions associated with affordable housing development fees. Resolution number 17 292, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for Ordinance 17 15. So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilman yes. President Bruno? Yes. Uh, is there anybody uh, that would like to address Marianne? Very out of the nice place. I'm just interested in what's the difference between the original ordinance and the amendment? Uh, yes. The, uh, actually, the original, uh, the amendment. Uh, to the original development fee ordinance, this basically updates and, and modernizes, modernizes the ordinance so that it's consistent with the most current co-regulations and uh, includes the um, development fees for both residential and non-residential development uh, consistent with the current statutory authorizations. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Motion to close. Anybody else? David. David Snide, 91 Windsor Circle. Um, have a question. Um, does this, you know about uh, builders' remedies that have appeared in all the towns that uh, the towns were not letting the builder come in to build some of the affordable towns and the builders have sued and won. Um, what does this mean in relationship to a builder's remedy if they come into the town? Well, we don't have a lot of property, so it might be a what if, but you understand what I'm saying to you. Okay, so, so I'll answer that. Uh, so the builder's remedy is the remedy given to a builder because the town has not complied with its affordable housing obligations. By virtue of the settlements that we've entered into that have been approved by the court, and our compliance with all of that, we get a judgment of repose for 10 years so that the builder's remedy is eliminated vis-a-vis -vis the town during that period of time. For 10 years? For 10 years, till 2025. Okay. Okay, that's all on that ordinance. Anybody else? <clears throat> 
Motion to close public hearing of ordinance 1715. So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 17-15 at second reading by title. Motion. Okay. Second. Before we do roll, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, the percentages uh, specifically for residential, the one and a half and the six percent. If at a later date the council chose to increase those, is that something that we could do? Uh, no. Um, the the actually those are the maximums. <clears throat> the one and a half percent is the standard uh, residential. To the one and a half percent of the equalized assessed value of the new construction. That's uh, the maximum that's permitted under statute. And the 6% of equalized assessed value is permitted in those instances where a density bonus or density variance is being granted. So, no, that's, that's specified. You maxed by, out? You maxed out. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's it. Back to you, Sue. <clears throat> Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Seed? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilman President Bruno? Yes. And that was the adoption, correct? Mm -hmm. so, okay. Ordinance number 17-16, <clears throat> an ordinance of the Township of Washington, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Article 6 entitled Class O-R District of the Township of Washington Zoning Ordinance, establishing the requirements for an affordable housing overlay district in accordance with the adopted housing plan element and fair share plan of the Township of Washington. Resolution number 17-293, authorizing second reading and opening a public hearing for ordinance 17-16. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilman Bruno? Yes. Bruno? Yes. Anybody like to address Joe? Oh. Okay. Marianne, come on up. Joe, sit. Hang on. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have a question. Who determined the different, this actually gets both in there. Who determined the different areas that were put down as overlays? The court master. Was she given all of the land that was available or was? She was given the entire town. She looked at the entire town. She was given a tour of the entire town. She's consulted about the entire town from every location in town. Correct? Uh, that's, that, that's absolutely correct. I mean, I just, the reason I'm asking is the swim club is 6.2 acres. It'd be a perfect area for an overlay. And there's problems that could be down the road for this swim club. So you're looking at an area that could be developed where, you know, I mean, I'm, that's what I was just wondering why she would have taken that and not put it in her, you know, I'm just curious. Okay. Um, well, obviously, she made the determination that uh, that it was not a um, uh, a reasonable or suitable site for uh, for an overlay. That there was a more likelihood that um, uh, a non-residential use or a, a uh, in the case of the uh, nursery school, a use that uh, was maybe under utilizing. No, this is a swim club. No, 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 no. no, 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 no but I'm nursery, saying nursery, oh, nursery, 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 not a nursery school. The, the, the nursery. The, the nursery. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, sorry <laughs> about that. Um, the nursery. Um, the um, that those were that those were more um, reasonable and realistic opportunities to uh, to provide the overlay. Okay, because it's a smaller, much smaller. It's only two point four. Compared, uh, for, you know, for for whatever reasons, uh, okay. the the court master did, she, did that. Is there a report that she gave the council that you know? She prepared a report and presented it to the court on based on her findings. Okay, well, will that be part of this whole okay. settlement or well, anything? It's public. It's, it's part public. of the public it's record. It's on file here in town. Mm -hmm. Can I get a copy of it? I don't see any reason why not. Okay, I'm just you know asking. So if I send an open request, Absolutely. I can be given a copy of it. Absolutely. 
Excuse me, Ken, isn't that online? Is that the one I put Probably on? is online. That's oh, online. okay. Is no, it online? It first, and it's not going to send me yeah. an offer. Yeah. I, think I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all out there. The settlements are out there. The no, no, I mean, I, there, I took yeah. everything off that I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was been away for a month, so I was just yeah. curious yeah. as to why that one wasn't done. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah this. Sorry. Yeah, this. Mr. Mr. Council President, can we actually turn the air on, or is that not functioning in the town hall? I don't have We're control, yeah. have control yeah. of a key. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have air conditioning? I, yeah, it's half a second here. We have a key? Joe? I, I agree with you, but I was told not to put it on. Who told you not to put it on? You run the place. You're in charge. I know, but I, you know, I was warm, but... You know. Look at Stan. He's dying over there. What's that? He said you're dying over there. Well, I just thought it was because we, we were ta started talking about affordable housing. It started getting warmer. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Joe Dersu, 12 Biola Terrace. Uh, the next two ordinances are my issues. Uh, you've explained it. You've this, explained it. Is this it. one an issue, the one we're doing? Yeah. Okay. Overlay. Okay. No, I'm just, when you said the next two, I just want to make sure. Well, this one and the next one. All right. Um, go ahead. I know they're. Joe will be back. What's that? You'll be back for the next uh, one. Why not? <laughs> you know, the problem is people don't really get it, you know, or, you know, they'll, they'll get it when you start, you know, developing. And, and again, it's human nature. I mean, you just brought up, Ken, you just brought up that they, they were giving a tour of the town. By who? Who by, toured? By him? No. By me? You both you do not live in town, right? You used to. You don't. You, you thought. Um, no, no, not to be sarcastic. You thought it was a nursery school. It's a nursery, no, it, it, but that that's an overlay property, you know. And you know, again, I, I was glad that Mike from Stonemill came in here. You know, uh, I think it was at the planning board meeting actually that he came, uh, when I was there too. Which, you know, you guys needed the planning board to update all these. Um, ordinance, I guess the, you know the codes and everything, and that's what the, the planning board had to be involved to update some of these. Uh, they ordinances. had to find that to make a determination that those were, ordinances were consistent with the amended master plan. Yeah. Were they? Were that was you. everybody on the planning board advised of what went on, and you know, of, did they quite understand what they were all agreeing to, or did they just rely on Stan, yourself, and Paul Azalino, who's the engineer of the planning board? Well. I mean, we had public hearings. We had public hearing. We had a, another presentation. Everything was done, you know, at the planning board level. It was all explained. Uh, and, and look, I'm not. I'm not saying that you would love overlays, uh, you know, or not love overlays. But the bottom line about overlays is that, in order to get resolutions of these cases, towns have to do things. They have to. They have to employ mechanisms to uh, permit uh, affordable housing to be built. Mm -hmm. uh, fair share housing is not going to settle a case if you say we're going to give you three units in town and we have no other place to build and have a nice day. It just, it's not going to resolve itself. Then you're going to go to court, you're going to go through all of the you know, machinations yeah. of what the court is. So, and I'm going to take every time, I'm just trying to explain this to you. Uh, so the overlay is, is one of the mechanisms that are used in all the settlements, pretty much all the settlements. Um, yeah, it's particularly where you have a vacant land adjustment yeah. municipality. And by the way, I, I apologize for saying nursery school. It's probably I have too, too many school enrollment projections. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when I, put, when I say nursery, I well, put that in front no, of No, and, and again, to but, be, and I, will, and I will say this, Joe, in all yeah. honesty. I mean, I may not live in town, but I certainly was not disinterested in you know trying to minimize the impact of affordable housing requirements on the town I just want you to I know yeah. I know you've done a you know even when I was up there you know it was always confusing it's a very confusing yeah. issue you guys seem to be experts on this but again you know you notice I didn't talk on the first three ordinances there was no sense but this overlay yeah, nice. bugs me it you know I, I you know and it's just again it's human nature what could happen with with over I really wish the one area in the town that we need the, uh, somebody to come in and develop is that disaster on the corner where, you know, maybe that should have been an overlay property. That would have been a great idea for an overlay. Maybe put residential housing upstairs or something like that, like they do in downtown Emerson or, and, or downtown Westwood or downtown Hillsdale. But that would have been a great, great idea for an overlay. Maybe somebody could have suggested that. But, you know, you got two people that had no clue, two owners, the, the Bethany Church and Stone Mill Gardens. One came in here and it was totally bewildered. Why wasn't he informed? And then he came in and said, I'm not selling. That's great. But if a developer comes in, which you're, we're all afraid of lawsuits, like as you say, now you're, we're clearing the path for these guys. Hey, Mr. Owner of Stone Mill Gardens, we're going to give you uh, X amount of dollars and we're going to develop because now we don't really have we, have, we have a green light to do it. And the Bethany Church, I believe the price was $8 million or $9 million. Uh, 
I mean, they could almost put, put an identical to what the commons are over there. I mean, I'm sure 9 million, they come in for 11 million and pick them, you know, make a nice profit and they can go somewhere else. Maybe, maybe they can go up to Woodcliffe Lake and buy the old mill or something like that. You know, it's just, we're clearing the path for these developers to come in into this town that is so developed already. And I know you're, you guys have your hands tied and all I'm saying is, you know, you're, you, Pete, you asked a question, I think it was you, can, you, can we get out of this? Yeah. And, no. and you said no. So, I, that's, you know, well, I mean, I, I didn't think you that's, said no I'm, I'm a little no, aggravated no. over it, and I do quite understand it. I just don't like the overlay because it's human nature. I'm in business. If somebody came in, I'd love to have my building where I own to come in and say, hey, it's an overlay, and it is in a residential area. Come in and give me $10 million. So I'd be right out the door. Well, here's the thing, though. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, but, you know, Put it in perspective in terms of whether you can resolve a case, and it's not just us, it's a lot of other towns too, and a consortium of, of towns that have tried to fight this thing over. Uh, I, I don't think you were in when the consortium was, was formed and all that kind of stuff, but there's been a lot of fighting to try to not have affordable housing come into some of the towns, particularly when you have towns that have, you know, not much land to develop, like we don't have a lot of. but. The, the, the reality is is that you can't get a resolution from the courts mm -hmm. uh, without an overlay uh, being a component in a vacant land adjustment town. And here's the thing too, Joe. I mean, yes, uh, the court master who, by the way, the court master makes a recommendation to the court. So, and the court master was appointed by the court. So you can imagine the judge is going to be very mm -hmm. uh, careful to listen what the court master has to say about, you know, what mechanisms should be used and what overlay should be should be permitted that kind of a thing so the long and the short of it is that if you take the stance of no overlays then you pretty much are, are uh, giving away any ability to actually settle the case and then the, it goes to the judge and the judge can put whatever the judge wants to overlay whatever zone the judge wants to do or do whatever the judge pretty much wants to do in terms of how to uh, saddle the town with an affordable housing obligation, including setting numbers and, and all of the open issues which we've actually got, kind of gotten resolved. And yes, I think that every settlement has components where we're mm -hmm. not happy, but on balance, you know, so, you, ha you, have to take a, you have to take a look at the balance. I won't take up too much more time, and I, and yeah. I probably won't speak on the next ordinance because it's the same, you know, technically yeah. thing. But yeah. my point is, do you have provisions, because it's, again, I'm not telling you how to vote, I really wish you guys would table it, but that's my decision, and you're explaining why they, maybe they shouldn't. But are there limitations on, on – because it seems like you're – this still has to go through zoning, correct? Or no? They have part blanche. No. 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 Doesn't but, have so to, you, you, you're it, telling me it, a developer it has, it has can come to go, in here. No, it has to go through to the planning board for development. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, it's a per, it becomes a permitted use. That, so, but, but it still has to go to the planning board for, for site plan. For site plan. So, so Stan, you had mentioned you know, at the planning board like the what if factor. So the what if factor, if Stone Mill Gardens was sold and they come in and they want to build X amount of residential units, how many, what, was the, what was the calculation for how many affordable housing units were going to go in at Stone Mill Gardens and how many are residential? How many can they build on that property? Yeah, uh, and, and this, remember, this is just a, uh, an estimate and it's based on the uh, the density that the uh, the, the court master agreed to. So in that case, in st for Stone Mill, um, uh, based on eight dwelling units per acre, uh, and it depends, as, as you know, that uh, uh, if it's a for sale project, it would be a 20% set aside, 20% of the units would need to be affordable units. Uh, if it was a rental project, 15% of the units mm -hmm. would have to be rental. So based on what we est estimated as, a, and we evaluated the environmental constraints, uh, based on a net developable uh, air, uh, lot area of about two acres, a little under two acres, um, and uh, accounting for the um, for the various environmental constra uh, constraints, uh, that uh, that we were anticipating that uh, the the site has a potential to produce up to uh, twelve total units, and that would be two or three affordable units of those twelve uh, that would be potentially affordable, depending upon whether the project was. Uh, a rental or a for sale project. And would, they wouldn't be homes, they would be townhomes or regular homes? It, it, it would be some kind of multifamily project. Multifamily, so yeah, probably I mean, so it would be, be townhomes. It, it could be townhomes or, uh, or, okay. or apartments. Okay, okay. And, then, and then just in case anybody's paying attention or listening out there, which I don't know, probably not, but 
Bethany Church, the old Y. How many possible properties? Yeah, and in that one, the the, 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 the density, the net density was uh, 15 dwelling units per acre. And again, we considered all the environmental constraints, including the um, the C1 waterway and also the the portion that was uh, that was currently developed. So that um, we would uh, we came up with a potential of uh, net developable area of about seven acres. Uh, and then, so that would mean that the site has a potential to produce up to 105 units uh, between 16 and 21 of those 105 would be affordable uh, depending upon whether the project was a rental project mm -hmm. or a for sale project. I, I don't have a problem with affordable. People are entitled, you know, I mean, everybody might look at, oh, you don't want affordable housing, you're, you're, you're prejudiced, you're, you know, no, there's people in, in hardship cases, and I'm, I don't have a problem with the affordable part of it. I have a problem with us allowing, because we have, because we have to, by law, you're, you're putting all these units. Joe, are you going to speak at the next one, too? No. Okay. Because um, it doesn't matter, it's just a, it's okay. just a copy over. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm done here, but I'm just saying, it's just, that's a lot of units, and that's a lot of, you know, you never know what owners of businesses want to do. You know what? Something might not go right, you know, and they just want to bail out. And, and I don't blame them for profit. And that's, I just think there should be a little bit of fight because there still are people out there fighting. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Just one, one clarification I think it's important to note. I mean, you had a question concerning why the... Uh, um, why the um, court master was in. Uh, we did not invite the court master mm -hmm. to do a site, uh, site visit. Um, the court master uh, requested that site visit uh, based on her um, uh, uh, review and obligations as court master to fully review the, uh, the, the township, the township's plan to evaluate the township's proposed vacant land adjustment. So we were not, you know, uh, probably during the course of that conversation, we probably knocked off, I would say, three or four um, places where she thought there was development development potential that could um, could add to the obligation. So I think we were very uh, careful and very and a, and a strong advocate to uh, to to minimize the uh, exposure that the uh, that the township uh, township had. But there's just so far that we can go. And in fact, yeah. actually, I think the densities once she's identified the those as overlays, um, I thought the the densities that uh, that were agreed to were were generally reasonable in that she didn't uh, you know, push us higher for uh, higher densities there. But you do realize that both overlay properties are technically on Pascac Road and already, you know, already overdeveloped, a very busy throughway that would cause nothing but major headaches. Yeah, you know? we understand that. And I think, maybe that, I think maybe that's also the other reason why the swim club was knocked out because of concerns about its location. Well, that was true. So that's it. Thank you. You know, the only com oh, you want to speak. To the only comment I'd make: <laughs> any, anybody that owns acreage, whether it's affordable or non-affordable, has the option to sell when they're ready to retire. I mean, if you go up and look at the farms, and you look at Demarest, and look at Tice Farms, these guys had all that property, and what did they do? It was time for them; they sold. I mean, affordable, non-affordable, I get it, but anybody who has property when they're ready to check out is going to have somebody come in, sell it, and build. David. This precedent of this overlay, you tell me, you're the expert on this. How many towns in the area here were set up with overlays by requirement? Was it based on population? Was it based on the court going to Monfail, Park Ridge, Hillsdale, Paramus, Westwood? I could keep going through. How many towns put the overlays in? Um, I don't Do know. Do you know? Yeah, I don't know how many, uh, what the number is of towns, but I know that uh, any town that has a vacant land adjustment uh, where it's determined that they, their lands are appropriate for an overlay, uh, they have overlays. And it's not set on population, but it, it, the, the predicate is really if you have a limited amount of vacant land, uh, court masters have been specifically, and even before the court masters, COA has been very specific about requesting that municipalities uh, incorporate um, overlay districts, evaluate their municipalities to see where overlays would be appropriate and to place those overlays in there. As I said, when we prepared the vacant land adjustment 
and submitted the uh, the plan to the uh, to the court, we did not propose any overlays. That was uh, that was a reaction and, and a requirement uh, that the court master imposed based on her review of the the town's plan and based on her own experience as a court master in working in other vacant land adjustment communities as well. Proposed, but did not re require, or we would have had to, to go to court if we did not do it. Well, um, if we did not, if, if she, if had, we did not do the overlay, yeah, if we did not do the overlays, and and, and Ken can can supplement this, but if we did not do the overlays, or we we said we refused to do the overlays, for reference, she would say she would be able to um, tell the judge. And remember, the the Fairshire Housing Center was also part of the litigation. Uh, they would have uh, probably pressed uh, the judge to uh, require us to do an overlay, and if it became a contentious issue. Um, they might have, uh, um, uh, rather than settle on a, on a reasonable density, uh, there may be even higher densities on those sites. I don't know, Ken, if you wanted to add anything to that. Not really. I mean, uh, you know, we've explained it enough times. There's nothing else to explain. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, I realize. I just, I, go ahead, Ken. And are those I just wish we would rescind this ordinance. I just wish. Here's the thing. I know. Here's I know you can't. No, no, I know no, what no, you're no, saying. No, you no, can't, no, but well, you could. No, no. What I'm saying is, you can't take part of the settlement and just say, you know, we like the overall settlement, but let's get rid of the overlays. It's kind of a package deal. I just think that this town, and that, you know, I've lived in other towns, as you know, ten, ten, and uh, I saw what happened in Upper Saddle River, where I lived for 28 years. <coughs> They're concerned about. I saw what happened in Montvale just now. Um, we're such a tiny town. We don't have a lot of land. And I just think this precedent, even though it's 10 years before it can be sold, that's the next generation of people that are moving into this town. These are the young kids now. They're going to be buying houses in this town. And I'm very, very concerned about this ordinance and this overlay. And I just emphatically ask you, to please not sign off on this ordinance tonight, and I think it should be reviewed. And I, and I did not read the 30 pages. I mean, I'm looking it through now, and you know, as the health care bill went through in Congress, uh, they asked the congressman, "How many of you read the Health Care Act bill?" Well, this is 30 pages, and I'm not trying to put anybody on the carpet, but how many went through all this? There's a lot of real estate in here. I understand a lot of this real estate. How many of you read through this and maybe had your questions and crossed? You don't have to answer me. I'm just asking you this. This is a terrible precedent we are doing for this town. And that's all I have to say. And I hope you'll rescind this tonight or table it to another meeting so you can have some more conversation. Thank you. I don't think we can handle it. I don't think we can rescind it, right? I mean, you know, it's no. an issue. So. Uh, well, it's okay. not a question of rescinding. You haven't passed it yet. But uh, if you don't pass it, then we will not have done what our settlement says that we are supposed to be doing, which leads to all other consequences. I would just say that we have had extensive discussions in private in closed sessions, we've had extensive discussions in public. Uh, it is a complicated subject. I feel that uh, Ken, as our attorney, Stan, as our planner, have represented us well. Uh, I do believe that this is uh, the best that we could do. There'll be people who differ uh, of that opinion. Uh, and I understand that we're opening an opportunity for the development. Uh, these developments still have to go before the planning board. Uh, and they are, there are densities that have been prescribed. So is, can, if someone bought the Y, could they put a 15-story skyscraper? Does, no. thi does this overlay say you could build whatever you want? No. No, that's, uh, that's why there's uh, uh, details in terms of the type of uh, setbacks, requirements, uh, height limitations, and, and, and the like in the ordinance. So we're not going to wind up as uh, some people have uh, spoken to me uh, uh, with tenements, with high, you know, tenements and or high rises on this? No. Okay. And 
is there an expectation that if people are concerned about the low income development portion of it, uh, on the surface, they have to give the same presentation. They have to present to the public the same. You can't have gold faucets on one and copper on the other. Well, I don't know about the faucets, but uh, the, the, the units essentially have to be um, uh, comparable in terms of their uh, physical um, uh, construction. And certainly, in these types of uh, developments, they would have to be distributed uh, through the project so that it wouldn't, they, there wouldn't be a, a separate building that would just be affordable, that they would be uh, integrated within the uh, overall project. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I've said my piece. I think. You know, I'm going to support this. I'm going to vote yes. Okay. Motion to close public hearing ordinance 17-16. So moved. Second. Councilman Delmore. Yes. Councilman Casio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 17-16 at second reading by title. So moved. Second. Councilman Delmore. Yes. Councilman Casio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Yes. Council yes. President Bruno. Yes. Ordinance number 17-17. An ordinance of the Township of Washington County of Bergen, the State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Article 6, entitled Class AA District of the Township of Washington Zoning Ordinance, establishing the requirements for an affordable housing overlay district in accordance with the adopted housing plan element and fair share plan of the Township of Washington. Resolution number 17-294, authorizing second reading and opening public hearing for ordinance 17-17. So moved. Second. Councilman Kilmore. Yes. Councilman Casio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. Any of you three would like to come up? Motion to close public hearing for ordinance 17-17. So moved. Second. Councilman Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance number 17 17 at second reading by title. So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Introduction first reading ordinance number 17 18, an ordinance amending ordinance number 17 10. Motion. So moved. Second. Um, if I might, just Mr. Bruno, just because Mrs. Sure. Osmond asked the question, I just went up, went upstairs to double check the numbers. Um, the is 24 hours per week. This this employee, and it's at a rate of $16 per hour for those of that you are interested. Thanks, Dan. Motion to introduce and pass ordinance 1718 at first reading by title. I think we did that, right? Yeah. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Resolution 17 295 authorizing publication of ordinance 17 18 and schedule public hearing. So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. President yes. Individual Thanks. resolutions. Good night. Good night. Consent agenda. Five. We'll take. Do you want to just do this Probably one? Let's do the consent agenda. Oh. Can. Okay. Consent agenda. All the following items have been determined to have the unanimous consent of the council and will be enacted in one motion. Should any item require independent consideration, any council member may have such item removed from the consent agenda. Resolution 17-296. Resolution 17-297. Resolution 17-298, Resolution 17-299, Resolution 17 no, yeah, we'll do that yet. Yep. All right, we'll poll separate. Okay, up to 299. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. 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 So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilman President Bruno? Okay, so we pull 17 ZB, we'll take a break. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Calamari. 
Yes, uh, regarding that candlelight service that I referenced earlier, I got a text during the break. Uh, candlelight vigil will be held in honor and remember remembrance of Township's own Grace Scutches. It will take place on Sunday, September 15th, 7 p.m. at the corner of Salem Road and Barry Drive. Sunday, September 15th? That's what they told me. No, Sunday, September 17th. Sorry if I said 15th. What did you say the day was? Sunday, September 17th, 7 p.m. This coming Sunday. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Resolution number 17-300, closed session. Motion to enter into closed. So moved. Second. Councilman Kellamore. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. And then obviously we're coming back into uh, public. Uh, can, do you put down the topics? Uh, can we just clarify? Yeah, uh, litigation COA. As long as we're in a closed session, I think we should have exit 171. Um, what was the other thing I had? Hooper. Hooper. Who's now? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no names. No names. We're still in open? Personnel. We're still in open? Personnel. Personnel. Oh, no. Personnel. We're, we're talking about the um, topics. Yes. Yeah, yeah, personnel. Personnel, okay. That's the third one. So, COA exit 171, personnel. Mm hmm Okay. Motion. Motion. Second. And we did, we did it. Okay. And we no. did our vocal. All right, so let me just tell them we're closed. And we'll be to open. Open. So the last ordinance, or was it resolution? I'm not really sure. Zoning board, zoning board. Zoning board. So. We have, uh, what, where are we with that? We have names, we have people to appoint. We have to vote. Yes, no? I'm trying to find it. We had your list from the last time, and a couple of people said they might have other people. Does anybody have, did anybody, have yeah, right, okay. Anybody else have any other people? No. Okay. I have other people, but for, and for two months, I'm not gonna put them up for two months. Okay, so that's a no? That's a no. Okay, so we have, what, what do we need? One alternative and two, two members? Yes. Okay, so we have basically, <clears throat> we have the one alternative who asked to remain an alternative, Saeed Ter Toro? Alternate, by the way. An alternate, sorry. Uh, yes? yes? Yes. So do we need to vote on that? No, he no. stays the same. Okay, he stays the same. Yes. Okay, he so then we have we have one Rich Sontag who's not interested, and then we have three George Mur Murvif, Moria, right? Dina Burke and and Michael Lagrada. So I don't I'm not familiar with any of the uh, candidates. So if anybody is or has something to say or Got to do them separately, or you can do them all together. Or? Gina was on the zoning board, if I recall. So was George. George and, so and Gina, George. They, they both have training. So went to the training. I would propose that George and Gina be made the full timers, with their terms commencing 9/11, <coughs> ending 12:31, and I would propose that. Michael LaGrada be the <coughs> alternate number two with his term commencing 9-11, terminating 12-31-18. I'll second that proposal. Um, um, just one question before we go. Sue, when you reached out to these people, they were made aware, at least the full uh, Main members, not the alternates, that this was only a three vacancy. month a appointment. Vacancy. No, vacancy appointment. They're but they know it was only for three months. Vacancy. Well, yes, uh, as opposed to the end of the year. Okay, they were aware of that. Yeah. Okay. I agree with Mike. Okay, so do you need to uh, make a motion or anything? He motioned. I, did. I second. Yeah, I did. Second. 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 Second.
Good idea. Okay, so let's see if we can move through this. <clears throat> so the road okay. program post pay route update. Okay. Janet, do you, you want to do it or shall I? Conference. Like a conference. Okay. Okay. Can we get a? I make a motion to move to the conference agenda. Wishful thinking, Steve. Motion conference. Yeah, we can motion that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Councilor Casio. No. Councilor Sears. No. Councilor Dolman. Yes. Councilor President Bruno. Did you guys say yes or no? I said One of us said no. Everyone said yes. Okay, do it. Um, I'll make this quick. So, um, at some point, well, when the roads were done and the quantities were fairly ascertainable, I asked Mr. Statile to provide an update. I haven't received a, a finalized bill, but based on the estimated quantities, um, we spent seven hundred and seventy thousand. Um, $36.16 for the roads that were paved. We are expecting to get back close to $155,000 for Mountain Avenue. So the out of pocket then is about five, what is it, six, six fifteen. Um, we got money for COA now. <laughs> you, can't, you can't pay for COA out of capital. $771.55 back. Yeah. How does that come back into the budget? It doesn't. What happened was you had authorized up to 600000 in new new financing this year um, with 200000 of the road program costs being paid out of <coughs> last year's. Now, that didn't necessarily mean it was all hard costs. There are obviously engineering costs associated with it. But I can tell you they're nowhere near the, the difference in the spending. It did leave you the possibility of adding a road, but it's now late that it would be, um, it, it, you'd have to make it worth the contractor's while to get them back because you had authorized, when you did the uh, resolution accepting the contract, you authorized change orders up to close to 150 yeah, for total total spend of 896,642. So we spent 126,000 less, which is good because that means the pricing we received was a lot better and we came and the estimates were a little bit high when you're doing something like this, it's not a bad thing to have your engineer estimate the quantities to be on a little bit on the high side. Again, this hasn't been you know when it when he's this is presented or it's discussed with the contractor the number could go up slightly, but there, there is some room there. Um, so it's good in that you had a lot of work done, um, and you, but you didn't spend as much as you, you said you could. So they have to come back in town to fix things anyway, so you know, why, don't we throw, why don't we use it up, throw in a couple more rooms? Well, you know, we got 165 to pave Woodfield. It would cost us 30000 out of our pocket to do the entire road. So we could use that the hundred sixty-five thousand we're getting, and we'd only have to use thirty more and get it all done. They're not going to come back for a small. They want. They're only going to come back if they have a big thing to do. Well, that's a big road. That's what I'm saying. So that, while, but while they're here, can't they do another road? Well, they can't. Well, by the way, they can't do that because the cost of the road, if we're expecting it to cost two hundred thousand, that would necessitate a new bid. We'd be over the change order amount. We wouldn't be able to do it. Unfortunately, Janet. Why? Because the law says that you have a base contract. The most you can spend with this contractor is eight ninety six six forty two under this bid. You, you said we only really spent. You spent seven seventy. It doesn't matter that you're getting reimbursed for a portion of it. It's still the contract with the with the vet with the. So then we contractor. can't. Then we really shouldn't be doing another one then. The most you could do is something that would be a hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars, which well, roads. We can do a few roads for that. Not really. It's pretty expensive. What? We just that, that whole whole terrace well, that, up that there. I don't know if you want to do that. We could do whole terrace. Whole terrace is a very small street. Yeah. They have uh, flooding issues there with some of the residents. It's. Not as long as this as, as long as this building. This road. It's very small. It's a private road, though. No. No. It's Remember listed by the found those documents. Well, it's not a private road. It is a private road. Yeah, we've done it. We've done it in the past. 
We did, uh, yes, it was done when Rudy was still here and Agnes, they did it, but uh, Bernadette went downstairs to wherever she found, and it looks like from reading it that it's not, real, it's not a private road, really. No. It was a something or other, but it's not really a private road. I, I don't have the papers. It was, I don't, I just know it's designated by Satil's office as a private road. Okay. Well, that's what he put on there, but I don't believe it is. Any, whatever it is. It's a, it's a small, I mean, I can't. And it doesn't anybody. matter. We paved it already. And we, you know, not we, but before us paved it. Okay. Well, anyway, just a suggestion. And it is a mess. And, it, and Mountain Avenue was done and it yeah, goes right into Mountain Avenue. Avenue. So can we quote on it? <clears throat> well, that if it's if it's under the 126, you don't yeah, quote on it. You you get the same pricing that was in the contract. That would yeah, we could fit it in. It's not that. No, big. I meant quote quote. Sorry. How much it would be to do yeah. number one? So we have 115, and let's say that's 15,000. We have another hundred left, right? It's well, he, he more said, than first of all, now. Chris Satil said the contractor is not going to get his machinery back right. in town for a $15,000 job. <laughs> and I wouldn't blame what him. $1,000? What? Pay them. It doesn't pay. It doesn't pay. Yeah, it doesn't pay. It's got to be a substantial, like, something that's, you know. He had suggested the next on the list, I believe, was Clinton, <coughs> I think he said. But I think what? we did Clinton. There was a portion of Clinton. I don't think we did. I don't know. I don't have it in front of me because I didn't know if you were going to actually spend more money because... Um, so we have $115,000. Yeah, but maybe we better not be spending too much money. <laughs> well, you can't use this for anything else. Why, why, why not use it? Why, uh, we're going to carry it over to next year. So yeah, but why, I, why not do it now and do some roads? I don't know if you've, you've actually financed all of it. Well, we financed $896,000. Then why don't you, Didn't we vote on $896,000? Well, that's what you... I don't know what your... What the CFO did, but... Okay. We're not really sure it was financed. I'm trying to think of okay. other small well, so roads that we can do. Um, I don't have the up-to-date road survey. I mean, you get into a little bit of a... They do my own. It's I'm tough thinking, if you don't go by the ratings at this point. Yeah, well, I'm thinking like um, like uh, cross streets, like the little we patches still have between two more, three more streets Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln. It goes between all those beach, fur, and hickory, and all those, those little sections. Well, let me throw a little wrinkle into it. Um, we were contacted, as you know, I think you all were contacted, and it was forwarded to me by the county about the road resurfacing agreement, which the mayor has signed, and it's been sent to the county. Um, we were told that Linwood is a definite this year, mm -hmm. and then Washington Avenue. The only catch is whether or not we have all of our handicapped ramps in. Yeah. And if we don't, we could use the money to use to make to do the ramps to get them ready for next year although i'm told that we get reimbursed by the county but we have to outlay the money so i don't know if that's something that this contractor could come in and do i'm not sure listen i i read that contract twice for the county very nebulous as to who's paying for what the in, our engineer has to work with their engineer to design the ramps and blah 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 and nobody it's not really spelled out who's pe putting out the money okay what is it what is our engineer and say? we have to provide the manhole covers and all this other stuff so it's not going to be like a cheap thing what is okay. our engineer did our engineer or our director of engineering take a look at the contract i hear you well chris did, Dettiel did, did, did ha, didn't have a problem with it and i will tell you this that um, when the mayor was concerned, I reached out to the other administrators in the Pascack Valley. There's two towns that had uh, the Hill, county pay. Hillsdale paved, and whatever. Hillsdale and Rivervale had mm -hmm. county pay the roads, and they said their their engineer had no involvement and there was no expense associated from it. Yeah, but maybe that. they had their ramps in. Well, that's different. That's but that's different, Janet. So you, can't we just tell Chris we have $115,000 and we'd like to know what else we can do? <coughs> I, I don't, you know. Well, if, if, if we bonded 800 and some odd thousand dollars, I mean, so we, if the money's there. I mean, we're not sure. Wrong. They're saying they won't do it. We're not sure what we bonded. Project. We're not sure how the 155 <laughs> comes back into the. You got uh, No, well, we're sure. I know that how that happens, Mike. So how does that happen? It comes back and gets reimbursed, but it doesn't um, lighten or affect, reduce what you can 
spend with the contractor. You're spending it with the contractor right. regardless of how it's getting funded. So the source of funds is right. irrelevant to okay. the change order cap. So if we can correct me if I'm wrong, is that right? I have to look at that. So we okay. should have we should have we should have bonded eight hundred ninety plus the one fifty. You can't knowing that we would get you can't free. You can't because right. you're going out to bid for a job, and you're going out to bid for a job, and you got the bid, and the and the law says that your change order, your ability to add on to the contract is capped to 20 percent because they don't want people no, 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 doing no, monkey no, I'm business. Not, I'm saying initially. What initially. We, we had all these roads, yeah. and we said uh, it's going to cost $890,000, right. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But in that 890000 155000 of it, technically, we're spending that because it's grant money or whatever it is. It's free money, but it's part of the eight ninety because you just said we're spending it. Right. So we should have we gone out knowing we were getting one fifty five free, and, and it had that eight ninety plus the one fifty five. And our net result would still be the 890. I mean, I thought when we went to the 890, that was our total spend, period. Plus, we were going to get 155 back. What you just said is no. That you well, then you didn't know the 890 wasn't the total spend. The 890 was the total that the contractor was going to get paid. It's right. a different way of looking at it. Well, whatever. I mean, he's going to get paid to spend. Uh, right. That's true. That's yeah. what he's going to get paid. So. So if that's the case, and it included the 155, which yeah. is free. Then we said, well, we were only doing 770 thousand dollars worth of, of roads, or whatever the whatever the amount is. I eight ninety plus 150. It's estimated at this point that we spent. So we shorted ourselves 155 thousand, is what I'm saying. Not really. You couldn't have structured it any other way. You just happened to luck out that the price for the the bids came in so much lower, and you were able to have. You had a change order. You were willing to do the twenty percent higher because you would estimate it higher. That's why you had the capability to do that. Most towns are lucky if they get in at the bid price. So you had, you know, your bids came in lower, and that enabled you that you had also previously in your heads all thought you were going to be spending a lot more <coughs> on your roads, and it enabled you to authorize a change order up to twenty percent. And, and and we did the best, you know, at that time, Chris said, okay, I think given what the quantities I'm expecting, these roads you could do. Remember, you would looked at the clusters and what you could add. And yeah, then we, we did the cluster. Right, so let, <coughs> let me just go back again. Let's just use 890,000 as the number. I thought we were gonna go out and get $890,000 fix the roads, and then get 155000 for this other road, right? So all the grant money was in addition to the 890. But what you're saying is the 890 is the total amount, less, that's what we're going to spend, what we're contracting for, and in that number includes grant money. Right. Right. Okay, so so I, I thought we were going out for one nine, uh, 890 in total, and actually we went out for 735 because the difference is grant money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that being said. The good news is that we don't have to finance as much as we thought we had to, if you want to put a silver lining on it. No, but I think so. I don't know. On the other hand, you could also spend more on some roads if you wanted to. I don't have the... Uh, I mean, I think that's ultimately the mayor's decision. Correct, Ken? I am not paying attention, so. so. Whose decision is it to spend more money to fix roads if we have excess money? Administration. I, I, well, I, I, you know, I would do Hull as um, Mr. Campbell suggested, but you said they wouldn't come back for a small street like that. I was gonna. I was wanted to do Woodfield because we're getting 155,000, 165,000 toward it, and we would only need 30 more. So I thought that would bring the guy back because it would be enough for him to come back for, and we don't have to put out another 30,000 plus whatever whole terraces, maybe 20 or 25. I don't know. That's so, what I thought would be good, but if Marion says we can't do that way. Well, I thought that would be a good thing to do. But. All right, here, let me just paraphrase from Chris's email when he 
It looks like we can do one more street. However, the problem is the milling yeah, machine is gone and the contractor needs a minimum amount of work to return. So doing a short block here or there is out of the question. Yeah, Looking at the street roster, Clinton Avenue is a good candidate, 65,000. Runs from Washington Avenue north to L Road in Hillsdale, about 1,400 feet long. We might possibly pick up side street Concord Lane, 16,000, but I'll have to look at its condition. We had a request to do that. Also, Clinton has the advantage that it's close to Hillsdale where Fitzpatrick is working next, so he can just remobilize the township by just walking his equipment over there. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, we, can I just get a clarification on um, Linwood, Marianne? Yes. They won't do Linwood unless the handicap ramps are in. Is well, that... you know what? I got, I got mixed oh. um, information on that. From uh, Tom Connolly called me and he said Linwood's a go. He said the only thing with Washington is the handicap ramps. Okay. And then that day I happened to be going to Hillsdale for the Pascac mm -hmm. Valley Administrator's mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. And when I turned right off of Pascac, I saw every curb, every r corner had the ramps, okay. but for one. And the mayor explained there was some history with that. There were some mm -hmm. issues with it. But Chris says that doesn't mean they're all compliant. compliant. Right. Okay. So. But when I was on the phone with them, I got, was led to believe that there was no issue on Linwood. And I think they're they're anxious to do it because it cuts through three they're towns. They're anxious okay. to do it because do it. Paramus do it. is on the other yeah, side. Yeah, we don't have to say, I mean, it's, it's basically up for the them. So if you want to put pressure on them to go forward, right now they have everything. I assume they have the agreement. Sue, when did you mail that out? Oh, Thursday or Friday? Thursday, Thursday, yeah. Thursday, Thursday, I think it was. Uh, Mr. Cool. Council President. I'm going to have to excuse myself. The only ramp got my we dog have up at home. on there okay. is on Road 4. I'm sorry. We don't have ramps on the other ones. <clears throat> Rose Court is the only one we have a ramp. I think I'm going to use that excuse next, too. You want to go take care of my homework. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Marianne, I'm sorry. The road program... Justin? Was estimated eight hundred thousand dollars. I think it might be easier if you look the at the sheet. Well, I'm looking at the capex sheet that you on our on our Better project down, you can borrow this. And then you had the separate one fifty five as a separate number. So with nine hundred and fifty five was the total amount. No, it was. Actually. The it was 809 was the actual amount. What's the 809? Why does it say actual amount? That was his yeah. estimate. Oh, 809, because that includes Suez, which we don't pay for. That includes what? That includes Suez. Suez what? Spice. That's outside of the contract. Oh, we're, not, we're not running yeah, well, it through our contract. When are we getting the money back? We're not running it through the contract. They're paying it directly. Okay. Marianne, I'd like to get a ruling on Hull Terrace, whether we know it's a public or private street. I don't know if that's me or Ken. You know, <coughs> I'll take a look at it. I recall that that was a private street that we did a lot of research on going back years and years, but that we decided that we would pay with those. Uh, no, I can yeah. say, yeah, I but, but I mean, I, I could check that out, but I, I, my recollection was it was a private well, street. I, I have to do you say, do a private street, don't yeah. you assess the homeowners for that? Uh, I, that one we did not do it. There was a yeah, determination to, to, by, to me prior, is, by prior uh, administrations. The, the precedent may have already been set, but if we start paving one private road right. and we know about yeah, it, yeah. everyone with a private road will we'll say, have to you did that it. one. I, I think the reason why we did that is because it was washed out in a storm, and we went in to backfill it, repair it. and There was a lot of water issues. Yeah, there. And, yeah. and that's why we did it. But that is a private road because I had an ex-brother-in-law that lived right on the It was Rudy Nagel's paper. Yeah, Rudy Remember that yeah. Mrs. Rockney came here? Maureen Rocky? Bob, her. I think regardless, I mean, I can try to clarify your questions tomorrow. I don't have that other spreadsheet in front of me. I think the bottom line is the mayor makes the decision whether to, to spend the extra money or not. You've authorized, the council's authorized her to spend up to... Eight something. I don't have that in front of me. The eight ninety six. 
So why don't we talk about tomorrow and see what we could do? Yeah. Since we're all just throwing our okay. words around here, we don't know what Rose really could do. Can I have that back? I can get you copies. Yeah. I, I don't one. have my cluster sheet here. Okay. <clears throat> Council Roman numeral 2A1. Steve is not here, but this was his his uh, program. So th do we have anything else on this? Or no, no so I haven't heard We'll any move this. On him. Was... Have we applied for it? I don't know. Wow. The uh, 1033A program. The military equipment. Because I can tell you, from down in that area, we didn't last get week, and most of it's it, right? heading to Texas and probably some of it Florida That's now. Right. What, Tom? I'm sorry. Yeah. You were saying what? Most of it's heading to Texas. Oh. Yeah. Did anybody look and see what they want? Can. What kind of equipment they want? But did we, did we put the paperwork in to get... Permission. I don't even have an uh, uh, application. Uh, huh? I don't have. I don't have it. Okay. And so how do we know what they offer? I mean, what what can we? They get? have a, a complete breakdown of the list. Steve had it here with us last week. All right. Well, yeah, there, there was just an edit. The list from Steve. There was an edit. That equipment that we could to get the editor, from the military. That's the not me. He was working with Sue. It's there was a letter to the editor of the record by a councilman in Westwood saying what a good program it's been for them. They got like a pickup truck from it. And yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so it's a good program. We should yeah, take some advantage town of it. over not at Wyckoff or someplace got mm -hmm. a, a armored a vehicle. <laughs> well, I'll take a pickup truck over an armored vehicle. Mm -hmm. But Westwood said they got like a hundred grand I worth of really good stuff. Ken, what are you going to do something with that contract? Huh? Yeah, Ken and I were, I made a phone call and I had some connections going okay. and then Steve, the last meeting said that he'd gone to a different connection and so he said, you follow Well, we just, no, we got to complete the 1033A. Okay, Submit so why don't you that. call Westwood No, because we want to do it. So where do we'll, we get we'll where call do we get Westwood and, see, okay. and get the stuff from them. Okay. What am I getting from them? I didn't you have to get the application and the list of it, stuff that you could get. I would imagine it's on the internet, no? Go to Go to some site and find the 1033A. They have a complete, Steve had a complete breakdown from okay. rescue equipment right, so to military you arms. Can, you can probably ammunition. go online and get it. Okay. Uh, relocation ambulance, firehouse location, BMF building. Yes. Peter, anything on anything anything here? I, I, I just asked for it to be on because I think Janet said she was going to follow up with them. <coughs> yeah, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Were you able to do anything with the uh, the uh, the firehouse ambulance DMF building with the uh, somebody to come in and look at the whole infrastructure? To see Not yet. Thank you. Did we sign anything yet or no? Not yet. I don't okay. have any information yet. All right. Ordinance and legislation codification project due September. Uh, so, Ken, we have to give you this before next meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I did make a, I did go through a lot of comments, and I'll send to you. But I don't. I, I'll have to send it to you, and if you have questions, you'll have to just call me because I, I I'm tried to go through and read as much as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any comments? Please send them. Mm -hmm. Habitat for Humanities. That's uh, the issue of the uh, of the bonding. Yeah. Uh, you were sent a letter by um, um, as Lima Fury on the calculation. Doesn't seem to be much argument about the quantum. It's just a question of whether you're going to require the habitat to uh, post that or not. According to uh, JC, she's never had to post anything like that. I did ask her to give me the bonding information that she posted with Ordell. I didn't get that yet. Uh, but that's the question because you could, you'd have to waive that. Um, so it went from 150,000 to 10,000, if I remember the numbers. Yeah. Give or take right. Yeah. Which is a big difference, hmm. and that exposes us, obviously. Should there be an issue, right? Yeah, but the question, I guess, really is what the bonding does is it gives you the money to do the improvements. And the question that I had, or somebody might ask, is if they somehow didn't do it, would you would you get a replacement contractor to do the improvements? In preparation for the uh, for the construction, 
What's the question again? If, if they did not do it. Yeah, I mean, normally what, what would happen, a private developer comes in, yeah. he's, he's supposed to build a project. Right. He's got a bond for the improvements, not right. the construction of the actual project, but the improvements, right? And that's kind of to underwrite the, uh, the fact that uh, if there's any problems and the town wants to get a completion contractor or, or do the, you know, get the work done, of course there's a default, there are bonds to pay for it just for the improvements. So the question is, is on this particular project, given that it's not really a private developer per se, uh, and the likelihood of them not doing, you know, not doing what they said they're going to do, uh, uh, you know, would you consider going with a lower uh, bonding amount? Now, the fact that it's 150, that's just the actual cost on it, just a calculation of the actual cost. So. That's that's just kind of an engineering uh, calculation. That's all that is. But they have to put up a bond for 150. The bond, I would imagine, is considerably less. The premium for the bond would be, but the, but the insurer might ask for the collateral, which, if you haven't done business with them, is probably the cash. So my view is, you know, we no longer own this property. Correct. Uh, If they can't do the improvements, how are we to determine if they can actually do the actual construction? Right. I think so. Yeah. so, you know, if they default on the improvement, chances are, in my mind, they'll default on the uh, construction. And at that point, we have an empty lot, and we don't own we don't own title to it. We've signed the deed over, so it's their property. Well, there is a reversionary aspect of the deed on that particular property. Remember that uh, we conveyed it subject to them building this project. And if they don't, there may be a reversion back to the town. Um, I, I, I think the point she was making, just so you understand what the conversation was, is that they, she said she's never had to post bonds like this before. You know, I can't tell you, I don't. I don't know the other projects, although I asked for, uh, for Ordell. And she says, we want to use the money that you would make us post with you to do the work. You know, that's the chicken and the egg routine. Um, so so you'll, you'll let us know what they did at Ordell? I'll, she's supposed to give it to me. Yeah. yeah. But let's, <coughs> I mean, uh, I, I, she told me that they, they posted the money for the landscaping, basically, what she said. Right. Right. Yeah. Ken, what's the town's defense if now another builder comes in and say, oh, well, you waived it for Habitat, wave it for me? No, it's not, I don't think it's anything that's, uh, you know, I don't think you have to worry about presidential value. Don't forget, this is, a, this, is, this, is a, this is a special kind of a project. You know, this is a, you know, it, it's our agency that we chose and, and, you know, we have an agreement with, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I don't, I don't think any other developer can say that, uh, they're being treated uh, differently and, and shouldn't be posting the bonds. But I mean, it's totally up to you. They also post, I think, 10,000 for professional fees. No, they, yeah, they, would ten, they, they will post uh, all professional fees and keep that current. Wouldn't this be part of the initial uh, contract or, or letter or, or kickoff or something that says, you know, it gets all spelled out, and then it is spelled out. But why? Why are they coming back now, saying, "Oh, we don't want to do this now"? Uh, they, they, this, we, they, we talked about this for a long time. Well, right? they, I don't think that they really have either thought through what the developer's agreement requires, or they have convinced other towns to say, "Hey, we're you know nonprofit. We're putting this thing up for you. Don't make us." You know, put extra money up and take away money for building. I don't know. As I said, I, I don't know them. To, okay. Uh, you know. right, so you'll let us know. I'll let you know about. Well, I'll, I'll let you know is about the Oradell. Right. Aspect. That's right. Okay. 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 Uh, Wave town day vendor fees. Uh, I think that's yeah. for the. Uh, I, I asked to put that on because um, the committee asked if we can waive the. Uh, the, the fees for the food service vendors, um, it would be $50 for like a one day permit, but we don't bring them into town to make money. Um, and so it was asked if we would consider waiving that $50 per vendor fee for the one day. Do we have to pay Northwest a vendor fee? Um, 
Oh, no, you said it that the wrong way. You mean just Dwarf West have to pay? And, and Food no, no, Town no. is going to be right now no, the no, only no, vendor there, and I'm he's got all the. Who, who charges for the to the fee? Does Northwest charge it or us? It's from the Board of Health. The Board of Health. Yeah, Northwest. Right. Well. So right, if the right. fee gets waived, who's going to pay Northwest the money? They don't get charged by, by. What do you? Northwest I said Northwest. It was different because I was under the impression that the Board of Health wanted to take it. That's what I thought. The and right now, the only vendor no, we have is Food yeah, Town, right now, no, only and he's got all the permits. Northwest has nothing to do with it. You're not going to charge him fifty dollars since he's already here. What's the max vendors you have? Three, four, three, five, hundred fifty, two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. But as for you ladies were just saying, yes, Northwest is going to have a table there. So no, wait, is this for Northwest to have a table there or for all the vendors? All the vendors. Oh, all the food vendors. Yeah, see, it's all the vendors. No, food, food vendors. vendors. That's food vendors. vendors. Yeah, yeah, all the food vendors. That's what I'm saying. It's a different thing than I thought it was. I thought originally coming in, this did, was on the agenda because I thought it related to Northwest having a table. No. Yeah, but we talked no. about them no. having a table. What I'm saying is if they charge the that much yeah. money. Do they donate the food? It's and like we, a cost. It's a cost. It's a dollar yep. plate. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they're not going to make. What I'm saying they is, have to sell 50 that plates somebody has to pay Northwest. Well, no, Northwest does not charge for coming to no. do their job for as health inspector. Right. That's that has. There's no fee for that. The fifty dollar no. fee was just a fee historically that you had. It right. doesn't go into the pay to the board of health. It goes into the town day right. revenues. It's just a fee, I guess, to control so right. you know and who's event, coming. Because yeah, otherwise, you could have somebody trying to sell. Out. Yeah, we have vendors that sell, uh, say, a plate of wings for a dollar. He would have to sell 50 plates of wings to no, offset the $50. But I think the idea is that we want to make sure that the food vendors are doing it correctly. Yes. And so they have oh, to right. be inspected. Well, that's, yes. right. so they yeah. will be inspected. that's the goal, that's right. Right. right? To make okay. sure that they're. You know, yeah. have taken the right precautions, whatever it is. If you waive the fee, you still have to have an, a permit. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Well, you still yeah. have to go through inspection. You just didn't right. want to scare off the vendors, like Tom said. They have to sell fifty dollars just to. Last year, you had a lot easy. of vendors, though. Yeah, this year we're not doing so good yet. We only got one. It's Food Town. Yeah. <laughs> and he's already had every fee in the world that he has to pay. Yeah, he's already licensed. So you're so charging fifty dollars for due. And he's going to give away more than. Look, the goal is to make sure that the food vendors get an inspection. Okay, right. make sure yeah, that. My understanding that happens regardless. That, that happens happen. regardless. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that's nothing to do with the fifty dollars. Hmm. So the fifty dollars is us being nice to some guy who's, who's supporting our town food. day. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean. I'll second it. What are we talking? Nothing. And can we just uh, town day food vendor fees? Because mm -hmm. it's specific to food vendors, correct? Correct. Right. I have a motion that we waive the town day food vendor fee. Second it. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Yeah, I have a motion. Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. All right, we go to road opening permits. What was this suit? Oh, this is something that Janet and I have been talking about for the last couple of months with road opening permits and moratoriums and paving curb to curb compared to just doing a strip down the middle and having a rumble. And so I gave you some samples of what, what Hillsdale has passed in, in the past, what we have currently, and some comments from Chris Latiel. So to consider just, you know. Can we table this till the yeah. next meeting, since, especially since Steve left? And yeah, it's a little complicated. Yeah. Okay. In the financials, uh, Marianne sent out a, a summary of what we spent to what we budgeted <coughs> and where we are. <coughs> so I went through a lot. I had a lot of questions, obviously, because of numbers, and I get, get excited. So uh, at any rate, I, if anyone has any questions, I think we should you know, get them to Marianne if there's any concerns. Uh, I think what? we have to look at, at this point where we might it's not be spending what we budgeted because, because we'll probably have to be pulling it from certain you sections. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take a picture of I, I probably had about eight to ten items. Okay. I had about ten. Okay. Over budget. Some of it I think is More. timing. You know, like right. Seasonal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll take a look at that. Mary, are you with us? I'm sorry, I was talking to Mr. Pollard. Okay. What's that? I just, I just want to go through your project tracker, if possible. Yeah. So, 
the new doors for the buildings and locks for the police department, currently nothing's happening and we can't get anybody to come. Correct. That's the first one. So are there new people we can call or, or you know? The DMF has been trying to get names for that, so it's not the easiest thing. Um, I said that I'd start trying to make some calls, but. For which one? The okay. doors. And the, and the drainage still is a, is a problem? No, no. So I followed up with Chris Tatil. He sent me an email saying his preliminary designs worked out. He needs to walk around the building to see if the drainage piping can work as planned. And then he needs to employ his architect to design a shed roof over the lower stairwell, which fills with rainwater. So they're on, they're being done hopefully soon. Okay. I do know that they surveyed it like right away when it first happened and then it just got probably Here's put the on the back burner because we had so many things going on with his office. No. Flooring, um, I don't know. For the new floor. So the painting is going to be in conjunction with the flooring, but do we have do we have quotes for any of this? Well, we had a quote, but then we for what the flooring or the flooring or the painting? We, we have the painting. You see, there's a re there's a purchase order that's yeah. been issued. The painting is we need a quote for the floor. Uh, I can't get the floor. Tomorrow, I'm sorry. Right, so we can't paint until we get a floor. So are we we want to do it at one time. Yeah. So do we have? So where are we with the floor? So we're just waiting for the new quote. Oh, okay. They were here and everything, but we picked out a different floor. It's a better floor. All right, firehouse siding's done. DMF ceiling is partially done. What does that, what does that mean? That it means literally what it means. They partially. <laughs> if they put up half, like, Sweet, yes, they put, put up four, up, four feet of it. Like they put, four feet I feet. think they need a t odd taller ladder. There's different heights of the ceiling. I'm not exactly sure, but that's literally what it means. <laughs> <laughs> it's partially completed. I thought that's what it meant, but I really thought that was a misprint or something. <clears throat> so there's a so there's a half a sheetrock up up on the ceiling. Then. No, it's more than half. Three quarters. All right. Oh boy. Uh, stadium lights. That's on the next to on, on the okay. bottom there. All right. I'm, I mean, there's a lot. It's all outfills your questions, your specific questions. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> okay. I don't know what you're asking on that. Well, I don't know what it is. 40 lights are out. This stadium is, lights. It's at the oh, football that's field. Oh, Memorial Field. Okay. It, the issue is getting somebody to go up in a truck, a bucket truck. That, that you know, it's not really the, the average ordinary thing the guys we do. We rent the uh, scissor lift. No, you rent well, that, but it doesn't come with an operator. It doesn't come with an operator, exactly. So then we got a quote from somebody, and it was, you see the amount, and it was, was so <coughs> we're trying to find, do a hybrid, hire an electrician that we can put in machinery. We, So I don't want to say too much because it affects the bidding, the quoting process. Okay. But, I mean, we put lights there before. Don't we have the service who does it first? They apparently last. No one knows who did it last year. Who physically was in the bucket last year? No one can remember. It was somebody from Patterson. Okay. The uh, uh, I'm just going to go, gentlemen. If you have anything, just jump in there. So, uh, please dispatch a hire. Anybody? Yeah. Do we have them? We interviewed three people, four the, people. So seven. the interview should be over. And well, we well, that's in there. It's up to the mayor. We also gave them a test, and um, I just got the results from the test. I have to read them through. We gave them a written test, and they had to answer a nine-on-one call. It was long, uh, so I, we have to read them over. So when so, do you think we'll get somebody? Since we budgeted this to save money. I know there was a lot of things on these lists. This, to me, is one of the most frustrating to me personally. I, I don't know. Uh, perhaps I don't understand the effort or the skill set required. But the council identified this quite early in the budget process. We asked that it could be done. And we are now, this is not happening until October at the earliest. And it just, it just, to me, I mean, we talked about COA, we, I mean, parking, all this stuff. This seemed like an easy action item, and it just seems 
that we are paralyzed by any number of things. Well, you know, they advertise and interview and interview. Yeah, but two of them already worked at a dispatcher, if I'm correct. Well, I don't know if we want to get too much into the candidates. Well, I'm not talking not about right. candidates, but I'm saying two of them. Right. Yeah, you are, though. So I, I don't understand. What are you going to get them a test on? Okay. Yeah, that's not true, Tom. Okay, uh, whatever. You know, I mean. There may have been, but when they got filtered down to. What? So can we say at this point by it, next They meeting, either are or they're not. They can't, may have been. So by next meeting, we should have somebody, right? They, you, you vetted them all the way to a test, so now you have to review the test, and then they <coughs> should probably should be it, I assume. So maybe by next meeting, we'll have somebody there? Hopefully. Okay. Well, the, the last time we looked, you said you had three. So how long does it take to review a three-person test? Mom, they interviewed quite a few. And then no, you said there were three. You no, narrowed it down three to three. Three, were sec three had second interviews. I think so this was a big money should, item for us. You should really have somebody by next week. You should, our next meeting. Uh, Mr. Pollard. Well, before we move on from personnel, I just want to mention something that was I omitted from there. Uh, we had another resignation. Um, Lisa Ruff, who was our part-time, or our, our only person working in the building department Monday through Friday, um, resigned to take a full-time position. So who's doing that job? Lisa Ruff. That's a big job, right? That's I know it's a big job, I and I am... Um, trying to advertise but <clears throat> so you're trying to or you are i mean that this is the building this is what is she the building the i know and second? she didn't i'm not she didn't we didn't get two weeks notice so it's we have no one i don't know what's going to happen on um on next monday well vincent our planning board is going to the secretary works in there part-time also but it's a two he he's not well, I won't get into it, but yep. I don't think that's, this first of all, you can't pull them out of planning and zoning. And this is a technical? Assistant. You have to have a certification. He does have the certification. Okay, so we won't mention names, and hopefully we'll have more an update soon, because it's a big job. So, uh, Kenneth says you're working with Quest? Uh, on access issue, is that what that says? Yeah, I'm sorry, you didn't get, Ken doesn't have a copy of this. Um, they asked about the Quest contract. I said, location for wells proposed in parking lot, groundwater sampling, logistics being worked out. Ken Pollard has been working with Quest. Well, Ken Pollard worked with Quest in the past. No, just recently, I thought. On the access. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, that's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Logistics being worked out, that's oh, yeah, to me. The access issue uh, on checking a well on, off right. on a home Pascac Road, which I am working with them on. So well, the contract know. went okay. through, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, yeah that's why they're taking steps. They're on okay. under. Yeah. All right. So we'll we'll get reports on that, or somebody will, or who, who's the point person on this? <coughs> well, he originally contacted just me, and I said to he should expand his scope of who he responds to because there's more players in it. The mayor, um, Ken, okay. and for the time being, since it involved the the. The parking lot where the police park. <laughs> I said the park the chief. <laughs> okay. Oh, but the DMF because they're they're around. Did we get all the quotes in for the computer yet? Are we still waiting? Did we jump over that one? Is that that's? No. Oh, we are on the. Well, I oh, well, I'm not going to do the Mason. Yeah, no, we do have the quotes. This is the deal. Um, I have to just I could, didn't get a chance to look at them. The quotes for the certain stuff should be identical because they're supposed to be state contracts. I don't know if there was a change between the two quotes, um, but then I have to talk to Ma um, Madam Mayor about, um, I'm going to put together um, a, a requisition and ask her to sign the one that I believe is the better one and then we'll go from there. But we've got two quotes. Yeah. So we'll be done 9 30, 2017. It says we're here. shooting for it. That was the date you gave me to put in there. So, unfortunately, when I get dragged off into other things, that, that unfortunately is one of the things that's been 
left by the wayside, and believe me, it's not one of the ones that I want to push by the wayside, because I think it's a very important thing to get done. <clears throat> okay, I don't really have anything else on this right now. Anybody else? Mary, the, the uh, firehouse. Yes. The um, old firehouse. Yes. Where do you want that place? I don't know. I asked what we were doing with that and the, the Tahoe, well, not the Tahoe, the Explorer. Yeah. Um, and at first, I think they were talking to Sue. They still didn't get back to me. But I have to figure out if what it's worth anything, whether it's going to be trashed, it's worth something. Are there? Okay. Well, we have a no, threshold. We can't just about... get rid of. We can't just get rid of an asset of the town right. without going through the proper steps. So I'll need to follow up. I need to have an, a sense of what the worth is of it. And okay. if the intention is to, there's no need for the use for the township, I have to figure out about auctioning things off or what, okay. our, what our options are. Or gov deal. Is there use That's to, Tom, um, there there use both to other fire departments yes. that may not have? The, correct. So if we've gotten our useful life out, our useful life out of it, uh, yeah, I think we do. We got all new ones, I assume. Yeah. I, I guess. But it's it like it's an asset that has to, it's on record on file as an asset. You know, I have to look. I I did raise this issue with um, the fire department, especially. It, it first came up in the terms of the, with the the cars swapping out, which I don't know where we are with the car delivery. But I, I anything think, that we're being replaced, that. we have to <laughs> account for, and you can't just throw it in the garbage or give it away. There's certain steps. Like last year, you authorized me to sell certain vehicles on gov deals, which we did. So the analysis has well, to be done. And off the top of my head, I don't remember the threshold of when it's required to be auctioned and when it isn't. But we're certainly cognizant of that, and we will be doing it. Okay. So I signed... Uh, my, I don't know what forms they were, but to give us all our big increases <laughs> to the council. So are we missing any anybody's uh, for the salary ordinance? Are they, what, what, no, what, the sh we're shooting for nine. What's the name of the form? The, the personal right? action form. Right. So we're shooting. In? We're shooting for September 30th, yeah. and I think there's very few that are standing. I just received from Ken two that he signed that are going to go to Janet tomorrow. I just received from you. The council and yeah. Cornelius, that'll go to her tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I and think. Sue's yeah, yeah, Sue's was. I didn't. I don't remember if I saw Sue's is is yeah, in until October thirty first. I don't think it was <laughs> in, in the package you gave me. Um, and then Joy is outstanding, but I don't think the mayor had time to look at it over the weekend. And we don't want to get into it too much, but I think the idea is to so have just one. I don't want names. I mean, just we're just missing one. No, where the mayor has to have a chance to review that. So far, all that have been submitted have been returned, signed, and we're in a position to pay everybody September 30th because we have to wait till the ordinance, the time period expires. Okay. Buyers. The ordinance. Okay. Motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.